something uh, about this uh, program that government of india ministry of youth affairs and sports has started various programs in the sports science sports management sports nutrition and program in sports biomechanics actually earlier in the uh, in india we have a uh, some traditional courses like bped and mped in physical education and in sports but government is also enthusiastic to start the some new courses new ventures so when we are planning to uh, give my uh, guest of honor a speech i was uh, asking you i was uh, th i thought that i will request you uh, the vice chancellor and director sir to start them some courses on sports law you can also take the help from the government of india ministry of youth affairs and sports as physical education foundation of india pafi is a national sports promotion organization duly recognized by the ministry of youth affairs and sports we are the one of the uh, national sports uh, promotion organization so uh, if you need i can also uh, come with some ideas about the starting these courses because there is a lots of scope in the sports law area in nada national anti doping agency wada in national anti doping agency uh, we uh, we can know that uh, now cricket is also come under the nada and in this ipl first time a cricketer will also come under the dop test so uh, as a part of pafi we see that there is a lots of scope of sports law and we don't have the any formal education of the sports in the india so i once again request to the honorable vice chancellor uh, sir that starting this diploma is a good thing for 6 month but try to start some ug or pg courses in sports law where you can mention this uh, anti doping aspect also you can mention there is a lots of uh, commercialization in sports there is because uh, after starting the uh, comes uh, nada uh, ipl teams comes under the nada there will be a more scope for the law professionals uh, we have seen that uh, in national anti doping agency because i am also a pafi is also an educational awareness partner of national anti doping agency so we see that lots of uh, players is suffering from the uh, this doping uh, procedure they need a proper law lawyer, lawyer. presently in delhi there is a lots of lawyer who is a is a common lawyer but they are also uh, doing the uh, practices in sports law laws area and even some uh, there is a one society for also for sports law in uh, delhi which is headed by uh, some uh, eminent lawyer of the supreme court so it's a great thing that you are starting these type of courses it's a uh, presently need need of the our uh, of these courses another important part this is a 100th year of the physical education in india the first college ymca college in chennai is started in 1920 by sc buck on 1st august 1920 and now we are in the uh, 220 uh, we have completed our 100 year in the physical education and sports education so on the, these 100 years starting these type of courses even government of india is also sponsoring the uh, the uh, uh, some new courses uh, ministry of youth affairs and sports because i know that uh, there are seven or eight universities is taking grant from the ministry of youth affairs and sports uh, for uh, uh, starting these courses in sports science sports nutrition so sports law is also a one of the important aspect in my point of view and if you want and, uh, and take any help from the physical education foundation of india we will also ready uh, uh, for you and uh, in my uh, closing remarks i i thank you dr tsn sastri ji honorable vice chancellor dr uh, v wala ji ji and dr sila stephan ji and all other distinguished uh, speakers from india and abroad that uh, your your deliverer will 
also benefited for the participants so once again i thank you to dr parma shivam for inviting me in this uh, webinar and also grateful that uh, i i also know about this that uh, you are planning to organize the diploma course in sports law so it's a great thing for me also thank you once again namaste thank you sir thank you sir for this wonderful guest of honor address yes, sir sincerely thank you in behalf of uh, the department of physical education and sports of tamil nadu dr ambedkar law university sir for accepting our invite within a short period of time within a week time we are very much happy and delighted to have you in this uh, international virtual seminar on sports life health ethics and law as a guest of guest of honor sir in the future tnda lu the department of uh, physical education and sports will collaborate with pfi and we'll work with lot of future initiatives related related to the sports uh, health ethics and law sure sir thank you. we are very much happy to have you thank you thank you namaste namaste so now in fact i am extremely happy for you are uh, uh, saying that you will give the full support being a national secretary of the physical education and sports i request you to help us in laying down this uh, course in fact to reach this course i want to make it even an online course so that people across can participate and deal with this course and i uh, definitely look forward for your cooperation and also see that it will further progress to start the a department in the university thank you jain ji thank you thank you sir thank you sir now before beginning our session i like to welcome all the participants from across the nation from across the world i welcome all the resource persons for so before beginning the session i wish to pay tributes to the eminent sports person of india the wizard the magician in the hockey field mr dhyanchand major dhyanchand the great hero of the indian field of hockey he is the greatest eminent sports personality in the indian sports history he is known for his extraordinary goal scoring feats and he has earned three gold medals in the olympics which has happened in 2000 1928 1932 and 1936 in those days india dominated in the field of hockey across the world and dhyanchand was the hero of the indian sports history always and he is known as a wizard and the magician and he is a super ball controller in the hockey field so dhyanchand is really has to be tributed in this hall because this even poster itself we have mentioned very clear the hero of the indian sports history dhyanchand so i pay my tributes to the great sports person dhyanchand in this occasion before beginning our international virtual seminar on sports life health ethics and law so to begin this topic is very very unique and spectacular and this topic has a good nexus with the history with our day to day life and with the future because the topic as it is coined as sports life health ethics and law when we take this topic we need to look into some kind of curriculum uh, it is connected with the adhigaram marundu and unave marundu marunde unavu udal valarthe uyir valarthe and sports do not build character the sports will reveal the character so in such a way this topic has a good connectivity with history and then various scriptures ancient scriptures like tirumandiram and then all the mythological stories and then various connectivity this topic has this topic has connectivity with the dharma the ancient principle which is the principle of the indian culture and tradition and this topic has fit india the idea of our honorable prime minister shri narendra modi the fit india this has a good connectivity that fit india and this has a good connectivity with the neeti the law the law the principle the dharma the truth the values and then the various other perspectives you can connect it with lot of principle and then the health care and then the yoga meditation and various perspectives even before 
டாக்டர் பரமசிவம் சார் டாக்டர் காஜா அஜன் சார் அண்ட் தமிழ்நாடு டாக்டர் அம்பேத்கர் லா யூனிவர்சிட்டி the department of physical education sports special conference on physical fitness and yoga a remedy to covid 19 after the pampering success of the event we plan to pull up a event which is giving more priority to the health nutrition ethics and law and sports like so with that vision we have came out with this international virtual seminar on sports life which is giving importance to three perspective connecting sports health ethics and law so it is not whether you get knocked down it is whether you get up that is very very important for so when a person can get up when he is strong in his caliber in his potential power strong stamina health ethics and then good values then only a person can get up and move ahead march forward towards success so with this i begin today's session the first session which is scheduled to happen for now i welcome our first resource person dr shanti rajasekaran md f a texas our resource person first resource person dr shanti rajasekaran ma'am will be addressing on a topic prevention is cure for a long healthy life and now i will read out the profile of shanti rajasekaran madam Welcome you ma'am. Thank you. I'm very happy. Yeah. Yes ma'am you're audible. We are very much happy and delighted to have you in the first session and I will read out the profile of our uh, distinguished speaker. As an experienced medical professional ma'am is experienced in extensive clinical working as a physician in field of pediatrics and she has very good ex- expertise in the health care of growing infants and children with care and great responsibility and madam is working as a group practice with pediatric outpatient services including routine check up sick visits annual physicals sports physical adhd autism evaluations newborn services and immunizations office procedures a referral services are done on regular basis and uh, ma'am practice provides extensions to medical assistants pediatric rotation for residents and medical students from ut south and southwest unt health system and other allied medical institutions and ma'am is a medical staff at the medical city of arlington mca texas with active staff privilege and she is a licensed in texas state medical license washington state medical license michigan state medical license ma'am's qualifications are mbbs india dch india residency training in pediatrics as md in usa american board of pediatrics certification usa re certification 2005 and 2015 fellow of american academy of pediatrics usa vls and pals certification by ahc being certified in march 2020 mam has done her education in stanley medical college chennai in the batch of 1983 to 1989 undergraduate course mbbs she is a gold medalist and uh, she was the best outgoing student of 1988 batch and topper in the state of tamil nadu in india indian academy of pediatrics quiz winner national service scheme volunteer and then regular blood donor at hospital blood bank and ma'am has served in various institutes of child health in india and special training in community pediatrics and then post graduate diploma in child health special training in general pediatrics and usmil preparation exam center singapore internship and residency st johns hospital medical center detroit michigan and usa and ma'am has a very long profile and i welcome madam to deliver her address on the topic thank you casper for the kind introduction um i'm trying to share my screen yeah my voice is clear Yes, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Ma'am, your screen is being shared. Yeah. Can you see the slide? Yes, yes, yes. Yes, ma'am. We can see the slide. Yes, yes. It's perfect. It's perfect. Honorable Vice Chancellors, respected National Secretary, professors, eminent speakers from all over the world. Good morning. it gives me great pleasure to address the students of 
the Tamil Nadu Dr. Ambedkar La University on Prevention is Cure for a Healthy Living. At the outset, I would like to thank the organizing team, in particular Dr. Paramasivan, for giving me this opportunity to address the podium. In 1268, Henry D. Prakton, English jurist, said an ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure. We were using the phrase prevention is better than cure. But now the term is prevention is cure for a healthy living. Basically means it is better to stop something happening in the first place then allowing it to happen and then try to fix it. As a healthcare professional, it is my duty to help control infection during this uncertain times of COVID pandemic. There are four reasons why disease prevention is important. The CDC, the Center for Disease Control, is constantly exposing new threats currently, you know, trying to prevent the spread of infection, COVID. The first reason is control. We need to control the spread by... Uh, I'm not able to move to the next slide. Sorry, something happened. I'm not able to move the slide, you know, to the next one. Let me do it again. In 1268, Henry D. Braxton, English jurist, said an ounce of prevention is worth a Pound of cure. We were using the phrase prevention is better than cure, but now the term is prevention is cure for a healthy living. Basically, means it is better to stop something happening in the first place than allowing it to happen and then try to fix it. As a healthcare professional, it is my duty to help control infection during this uncertain times of COVID pandemic. There are four reasons why disease prevention is important. The CDC, the Center for Disease Control, is constantly exposing new threats, currently you know, trying to prevent the spread of infection, COVID. The first reason is control. We need to control the spread by controlling air travel from countries to countries and thereby reducing the number of cases. And number two, healthier births. We need to have a huge reduction in the infant mortality rate. And number three, longevity. Aging comes with a number of ailments. According to National Health Profile, in 2019, Indian men have an average life expectancy of 68.7 years and women 70.4 years. And in the US, the average life expectancy of men is 78.54 years and for women 81.1 years. And the last but not the least, the cost. There is no doubt that medical and prescription costs are rising sharply, draining public funds. After solution, as new concerns with, let's see how we do all of these. Casper, I'm not able to move to the next slide. The screen is like freezing. I don't know. It's frozen. Uh, 
Ma'am, you can move this plate. Yes, yes. I don't know why it's not moving. You know. Ma'am, you can move it, ma'am. You can yes, move it. Yes, now it's fine. Yes. How can you practice prevention? Number one, being active. Number two, maintain consistency. Number three, practicing the theme of wellness. And prioritize and function accordingly. And last but not the least again, treat the cause versus symptoms. Let's talk about each one in detail. Let's start with the so-called wellness wheel, addressing different aspects of our life. We'll start with the physical wellness. What does it mean? Ability to maintain a healthy quality of life that allows us to get through daily tasks without undue fatigue or physical stress. It is very, very important to stay fit. Even this conference is aiming at promoting a fitness program in every individual's life so that we all lead a very healthy life, not only today, but also in the future. Next, next comes the social wellness. What does it mean? It is the ability to establish and maintain positive relationships with family, friends and co-workers. It goes without saying we are all social animals. You know? We have to socialize to lead a social well-being life. And comes the emotional well-being. It is the ability to understand ourselves and cope with the challenges life can bring in. We all go through different kinds of emotions, especially during uncertain times. It is very normal to be, you know, stressed out and to worry about it, but to have some coping strategies, solutions, and, you know, to adjust, adapt, and move on. Next is the occupational health. It is very normal to be, you know, stressed out and to worry about it. But we need to have some coping strategies and come up with solutions, and you know, to adjust, adapt, and move on. Next is the occupational health. It is the ability to get personal fulfillment from our jobs or our chosen career things while maintaining balance in life. We all work from eight to 10 hours every day. So that plays a major role in our well-being. So we need to have a friendly and a very healthy environment in our occupation wherever we work. And the next is the intellectual wellness. It is the ability to open up our minds to new ideas, an experience that can be applied to personal decisions, group interactions, and community betterment. So each one has a different level of IQ, but we all have the potential to socialize and to improve each other. Next is the environment. We all play a major role in our community, not only as a professional, as a citizen of our country. So it is our duty to keep our environment wellness, which is the ability to understand responsibility for the quality of air, water, and land around us. Even this current COVID pandemic is because of the damage done to the nature by the human society. So this is a lesson learned during this uncertain time to clarify and to rectify our mistakes and to have some good solution to correct ourselves. For that, you need some spiritual wellness as well. We all have different beliefs. Whatever you believe in, there comes a spiritual wellness. It is the ability to establish peace and harmony in our lives. 
it doesn't matter which religion you belong to it is very very important to believe in something if you don't believe in god it's okay to believe in nature or just yourself and this completes the wellness feel in every person's life I'm not able to move to the next part. Can you see the slide? You want to press it? You want to press it? Next, we'll talk more about the physical wellness, which is the topic of the day. Understanding the need of each individual is very important. Our body is our main key to operate everything. by our mind and soul so for the body you need to have what's called a healthy balanced diet vital nutrient dense food is very very important we need to make sure we avoid junk food and sugar in our diet we need to have a everyday routine which should include consistency consistency and the uh, I don't know why it moved to the next one. I'm I'm not the presenter. You have the control over the entire screen. Say it again. I'm trying to go back. You know. I'm trying to go back to the previous slide. Yes, yes. I'm your the presenter. Please. Uh... You want the present? But uh, I have to go back to the previous slide. You know, give me one second, please. You want the present? Can you see the screen? Not clearly. So please uh, improve. Yeah. Can you see now? Okay. Having a routine to okay. have self-discipline, okay. we need to encourage physical activity in our life, and also equal importance goes to resting our mind and the brain. Perfect. Now it's perfect. You can continue. Every one of us should sleep at least six to eight hours at night, and to have a better tomorrow, you have to rest the brain by encouraging activities, calming activities before bedtime, and limiting screen time, like distracting yourself with all these new technologies. Next is our social wellness. So, spiraling around. A wellness wheel. We need to prioritize what is needed at this given point of time, and we all should reach out and talk to other people to find out how they are feeling, not only physically but as well as emotionally and socially. So we need to look at the way we communicate with each other. We need to have this consistency. I'm telling this again and again. Not only in our personal life, but also in the society, by sharing our stories and to find out what is going on out there in our society. Let's talk about our emotional wellness and intellectual wellness, which plays a very critical role to help not only ourselves but also others in 
in our society. I am okay. So we need to address when we are not okay or the other person is not okay and find out what kind of emotions we are going through right now. And we need to have some relaxation techniques and we can develop some network of support, not only with our family, but also with our friends and our community and teaching them some playground skills for the children, you know, and to have exercise, sleep, and a healthy diet. And also, most important, to encourage everyone to be helpful to each other and to have an optimistic thinking. Coming to the occupational wellness, we need to have independent living skills. We need to help people who are in need. And we need to develop motor skill development in students, especially those who have developmental issues like learning disability or other soft skill problems. It is the duty of the teaching staff to find out which student needs help and help them accordingly. We need to enhance the positive mental health strategies to have emotional development. And when it comes to behavior, it's always the team approach that helps with the behavior of each and every individual. And we can have what's called a peer group learning. When we all learn together, like this conference, you know, we share our knowledge. This is going to help us not only personally, but also professionally. And a few things I want to talk about the environment. Again, you know, COVID is here because we didn't keep our promise to the nature. So nature takes care of us if we take care of the nature. So we need to have ambience which is suitable and comfortable for every one of us. And we need to have suitable workstation at work. We need to pay attention to the different components in our environment, taking safety and other warnings. Finally, I would like to talk about our spiritual wellness. We all need to have spiritual belief. As I said, religion doesn't matter, but we need this to keep our well-being. And it's quite uh, intriguing, you know, to see so many scientific studies coming up in uh, different aspects like yogic practice and a holistic approach. The whole thing is to improve our social skills, personal skills through yoga and mindfulness. It's going to give us phenomenal enhancement if we keep our body, soul and mind at peace. We can be more productive and this is going to help us improve our cognitive functioning. It is an eye-opener to see how yoga and meditation, which is mindfulness, that can help us to enhance the quality of life and our lifestyle aspects. Before I conclude, I would like to say a few things about my project. I inaugurated the launch on July 4th. The Project My Life is a non-profit organization to help children with special needs especially with developmental disabilities like autism, attention deficit and hyperactivity disorder and learning disorders or dyslexia and other developmental disabilities. My main focus is for the underserved children in Tamil Nadu. The state of Tamil Nadu needs a lot more support. I'm very happy to see that both the state government and the central government have so many health schemes focusing on enhancing and empowering both women and children because children are of our future. They can make a very big difference and they can impact a very big change in the whole world. So we all play a role as a citizen as well as a professional. It doesn't matter what profession you belong to. We all should contribute to this community to have a healthy future because children today, you know, if you guide them correctly, they can be better adults in the future.
So I would like to request all the students here to take care of each other as a society and to take care of the whole nation and nations joining together, the whole world, we can have a peaceful, healthy and happy first. So this is our goal. So Project Mandalay aims at early identification of problems in growing children so that we can start early intervention as early as one and a half to two years of age. We can make them talk, we can make them walk, we can make them do better in school. The key is catch them young. So that's why I would like to catch you all because you're all very, very young. You can spread the news that, you know, early identification of problems, early intervention in anyone. It doesn't matter who, where and how. If you can spread awareness, we can create a better world to live so that we all live in peace and grace. Um, we are unable to hear your one voice. Um, we are not audible. Am I audible? Yes, but now we are audible. Um, so basically, um, I'm uh, doing telemedicine for um, children in India, especially Tamil Nadu. In this uh, telemedicine, I'm helping uh, children belonging to the uh, lower socioeconomic group. Um, in this project, we are doing monthly webinars to create global awareness on developmental disabilities in children. We started with a bang on July 18th, the first talk was by uh, given by Dr. Stephen Shore, who himself has high functioning autism. He's a professor in Adelphi University, New York City. And uh, the last month we had a program on uh, taking charge of your pregnancy and women's health by two eminent speakers, Dr. Geeta Arjun and Dr. Mala Raj from Chennai. And uh, this Saturday, September 12th, we are going to talk about fetal health by Dr. Shanti Sairam, and we're going to talk about genetics and autism as well. So my goal is to create awareness starting from prevention, women's health, pregnancy. It'll go on, you know, to uh, newborns, infants, children, school children, adolescents, young adults. And we want to talk about problems like attention problems, autism and learning disability or dyslexia and how to diagnose by, you know, uh, the topic will be discussed by different speakers from all over the world. So I request you all, uh, please make use of this opportunity and benefit from this. Uh, before I uh, conclude, I want to tell you some secrets. So what is the happiness chemicals and how to hack them? I hope all the uh, students are, are looking at this slide. There are four chemicals in our body dopamine, oxytocin, serotonin, and endorphin. So dopamine is the reward chemical. For example, you post something in Facebook or Instagram. So you're waiting for how many likes. So if you see more likes every time you log in, you know, that's how your dopamine gets released. You're, you're all craving for dopamine. So like completing your task, doing self-care activities, eating food or celebrating little wins. So this is how you get happy. But I have to tell you, don't become addicted for this dopamine drive. This is what is going on in the social media. So once you post something, you want all your friends and family to like it. And you know, um, it is not real, right? So you, you know, your, you know about yourself and your potential. So the happiness chemical should come by you know naturally doing it you know you don't expect others to praise you you know what you're worth you know so be confident and do whatever you want to do with 100 percent dedication and passion next hormone is the love hormone that can be released just with playing with any animal playing with a baby just holding hand or the hug therapy you know the katipidi vaidyam na tamila soluvom so hugging and give compliments, you know, so be be good at heart.
So that's how you get the love hormone. And the serotonin is the mood stabilizer. So we keep telling, and uh, even our honorable vice chancellor mentioned about uh, meditation uh, and exercise. Again and again, I talk about you know the happiness hormone, endorphin, which get released when you are running, when you're doing exercise, and exposure to sunlight, and when you walk in the nature, swimming and cycling. These will lead to increase in your serotonin. That is that works as a mood stabilizer. The other one is the endorphin I just mentioned. This is a painkiller, and we have laughter therapies. You know, in a lot of uh, uh, communities now, and uh, taking some essential oil, and then you know, uh, laughing your heart out, and like watching a comedy, and eating dark chocolates, and of course, exercise. I cannot emphasize more than this. So, exercise, exercise, and be fit. So that will lead to the ultimate happiness along with the fitness. So uh, I don't know what's happening with this. You know, I'm, when I start using the annotate annotation, I'm not able to move the slide. I, I just again. yeah. See, it's not moving when I move the next slide. I want to because you are the presenter. Yeah. So I just have one last slide and then. These are the references. There's something wrong with my cursor or, you know, when you put the annotation, it doesn't work. I don't know. Anyway, I don't want to. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. Thank you so much for the organizing team, especially, you know, Dr. Parmasivam for giving me this wonderful opportunity to listen and then to work with you all. I'm looking forward to you know, uh, doing that uh, diploma course our vice chancellor was mentioning about. And uh, it's a great honor to be presenting in this uh, podium. Again, thank you very much. Namaste. Thank you, ma'am. Ma'am, it was a wonderful session and uh, such a wonderful presentation. And the PPT was so nice. And then your way of expression, the way of your uh, ideas and everything was so nice, ma'am. And we, we are very much happy and delighted to have you in this international virtual seminar on sports life and health law. Always we used to say, first impression is the best impression. So you have begun our session with the best impression, with the best, a lot of ideas, information, and a lot of health care tips, and then a lot of uh, information. It was very, very, very nice. And then we want to thank you. Now in future, our Department of Sports, uh, Physical Education and Sports, we will be collaborating with your institution and work with a lot of future initiatives. So sure. in, behalf of, Thank you. in behalf of the Department of uh, Physical Education and Sports, TNDLU, I wish to communicate this to you. Thank you so much. Thank and you, I apologize. I, I sincerely apologize, you know, for the screen share problems, you know. No this problem, has never happened to me. This has never happened to me. I don't know why I couldn't move to the next slide. No Sorry problem. about that. No Sorry problem. about that. No problem. Technical issues happen. But virtually, we even in this time of pandemics, in such a way, we have to thank the virtual platforms. Technical issues are, it, it, used to, it used to occur in all occasions. And ma'am, another thing, your presentation has given an, another reflection. Like uh, in Tamil, we used to say, Varumun top of the male. In health also, we have a tips. Prevention is better than cure. Sure. So your uh, presentation has given us that kind of a reflection on the particular quotes. The uh, prevention is better than cure. That is the objective and that of your presentation and thank you ma'am thank you so much for the wonderful presentation thank you we're very much happy to have you namaste thank you, thank you. Thank you. so now i'll go with the next speaker hila devi dev phd researcher olympic studies german sports university Cologne, germany sir hila devi dev phd will be addressing on a topic sports education during covid 19 and challenges for the future now I will read out the profile of our next distinguished speaker, Hila Devide. Sir, education, be it and teaching certificate, Magna Cum Laude, physical education in Wingate College, Israel, 1995. In 1999, MBA, Sama Cum Laude, Dean's List, Derby University, 
2018, a student at German Sports University, Cologne, Olympic Studies Center, Sports Education, MAOS, Master of Arts, Olympic okay. Studies, 2018-2019. Okay. PhD candidate specialized in using sport as educational tool for developing youth life skills. And 2019-2020, digital marketing specialist, diploma studies and technique. Oh. Sir has done various courses like value education through sport, European Sport Platform 2019. International Conference on Olympic Games, Path to Success, European Olympic Committee, Sports as a Means of Reconciliation, Olympic Values Education Program, Train the Trainer, Delegation Leaders to the European Games, and CEO's course. Various uh, courses sir has done, and then he has also tutored many, many, many scholars and many people. And IDF service, Terms of Service in the Education Officer in the Air Force, and then Second Lieutenant upon Service Completion. And Sir's professional experience, Sir has served in International Catchball, Catchball Federation and the National Physical Education Program and then the Director of External Relations, Management of Relationship between International European Olympic Committee and Israel Olympic Committee, Management of the Olympic Solidarity Fund of Israel NOC, Establishment and Management of the Olympism Project, Organization of International Conferences and Seminars, a lecturer in colleges, universities, military setups, training base, aid and intelligence ops, management of instruction and development, management of workshops, leading a pilot of education for a project, leading teachers project, a member of the Olympic Studies Center Management, manager of the Women's Top Team project, directing the Adopt a Sports Women project, and the Olympic, Olympic Sports professional coordinator in charge of collecting and statistical analysis of professional data, gold reporting management, lecturer at the Coaches School of Wingate College was in, also involved in teaching an Excel course. Awards. Sir has received various awards like 2016 Award International Committee of uh, Fair Play and then uh, a reward for the management of operation and logistics of the 2015 Babu delegation as a professional associate to medal Saji Moki, Yar, Ten Gerbi, and then Yuri Sasson. And then a reward for the management to the operation and logistics of 2016 Rio delegation, professional associate to the Olympic medals, Yarden Gerbi, Yuri Sasson. And then certificates of appreciation. Sir has known languages like Hebrew. He's not, then he's very good in English proficiency. So such a very long profile, sir has, and we are very much happy and delighted. And I take immense pleasure to welcome our next speaker, our next speaker, David Dave, Kila David Dave, to address on topic sports education during COVID nineteen and challenges for the future. Welcome you, sir. Hello. Welcome you, ma'am. Welcome you, ma'am. Hello, I would like to share my screen. Oh. Yes, ma'am, you can share your screen, ma'am. Yeah. Okay. Now you can see? Yes, ma'am, we can see. Yes, okay. Yes, can see. okay. So, Best hello, wishes for India. your presentation, ma'am. Best wishes for your presentation. Welcome to India. Thank you. Hello, India. Hello, everyone. Thank you for having me with you and attending this session hello, today. Hello, hello, hello. My presentation topic today is sports education during COVID-19 challenges for the future. And this online webinar, we have the opportunity for, um, to, to connect from different parts of the world. I'm based now in Israel at the moment, and you are in India. And I just heard that you are celebrating your 100 years for physical education, so congratulations for me. It's a pleasure, and I would like to thank uh, Dr. Ambasker, Law University, and especially Dr. Parama Sivan for giving me the platform to connect with you and to share with you the, this presentation. Thank you all. Uh, my name is Elad Vidov, and uh, my resume was already presented to you, but I, I think that the, the peak and the, the best achievement and that I'm really proud is the, my involvement of these uh, two medal in the uh, Rio Olympic Games and uh, the award of the fair play from the project that I established and managed regarding Olympism. And this is the field that I'm trying to be an expert in a sport education to use sports as a tool for developing life skills and to make a better world with a better community and uh, this is my my mission in life so regarding covid-19 
Um, this COVID-19 is the widest pandemic uh, event of the century and has affected the, the whole world in a sudden and dramatic manner with a huge impact on the health and daily life of world citizens. Citizens' health and their resilience need to be in the priority during the fight to reduce this epidemic dimension. The emergency regulation included restrictions on the individual. This regulation includes social isolation or even quarantine, accompanied by mental, social, and family stress, and fundamental change in normal lifestyle. Our job as a society is to, is to make the best of this time alone, but together. The activity is basically restricted to home radius. During the quarantine, we usually eat more, have a damage to our biological clock, like a sleep more or sometimes wake up later, sleep disorders and more. All of these have short and long-term implications for public health, affecting the individual, the public and the health system as a whole. Due to the epidemic focus, the attention and treatment of chronic disease were neglected, which for many individuals in the population are even more dangerous than COVID-19. When it comes to maintaining an active and healthy lifestyle, there was a lack of guidelines. Do your part, two meters apart. What studies show that participating in a group neighborhood facility physical activity is significantly uh, associated with increase in community, community resilience and healthy measures such as well-being, life satisfaction, and happiness, and others. It is likely that prolonged homestay may lead to increased sedentary, such as prolonged sitting, like more times in front of the computer, playing games, watching TV, using mobile devices, sitting of hours in front of the computers, Zoom meeting, Zoom seminar like we do today, and which means reducing regular physical activity, lower energy uh, expenditure. Sedentary behavior. By prolonged homestay can decrease behavior that leads to in inactivity and contribute to anxiety and depression, which in turn can lead to a sedentary lifestyle known to result in a range of chronic health conditions. Maintaining regular physical activity and routinely exercising in a safe home environment is an important strategy for healthy living during the coronavirus crisis. But nothing will be the same. The present day crisis urge us to address priorities linked to health, resilience, and physical fitness. Stopping the spread COVID-19 may cause essential changes to daily routine. We can't return to sport in the way we have been used to before the pandemic. We need to be patient while restrictions are being reduced in stage. Slowly, sport can be practiced, but within responsibility, responsible frameworks such as smaller teams and keeping distance where is possible. A joint call to, uh, to the decision maker needs to be made to allow us within the limits of physical remoteness to be active in the open space. Just for example, because I'm the catchable CEO, we had some health and safety guidelines because we want the, the women come and be active and continue the training when it's allowed, but we put some guidelines. So like before the, they are coming to the, to the uh, training, prepare before play, prepare yourself before coming, bring your own stuff. If you feel unwell, stay home. And if you don't feel well, don't, don't come to the training. If you feel well, come to the training. When you come to the training, wash and dry your hands before and after any activities. Facilities, soap, water, sanitary will, uh, will be available. Exercise cautions will 
this common touch point. If you don't do that, don't come. When you come to the training, ball, pole, and all equipment will be cleaned with this, um, disinfected before and after use. No kids or observers allowed to come to watch the training. So players only this time till the end of the um, uh, restrictions. And of course, keep safe. And as I said, nothing will be the same. And what about physical education? The moral value of exercise and sport far outweighs the physical value. Physical education is much more than just physical activity. Believe in using physical activity and life skills education to address real life challenges. The hidden curriculum is something we refer to when asked about the non-physical benefits of physical education. This crisis provides us with good opportunities to sit down and think about what the education in physical education truly represents. What do we want our students to learn? How does our school physical education program reflect it? How can we play a vital role in society post-COVID-19? Does participating in online physical education lessons develop resilience and other characters' values in the same way that a school-based physical lessons does? We, we saw already few ways to continue physical activity during the quarantine and social isolation such as physical distance learning, TV. But what about this physical distance learning TV? Why school physical education lessons are better? I think the interactions with friends, games, working with different people, working in different environments like fields, going to the gym, going to the pool, teamwork and connection with friends, which is much much harder to do it by a remote uh, activity. And of course, the PhD, the, P, the, the P, physical education teacher, the direct interaction, the essential component in all of this is the physical education teacher. The lack of direct interaction during this COVID-19 crisis has significantly emphasized how valuable is this connection. Getting to know each and every child, making them feel safe, valued, and achieving success at their own level is an extremely powerful learning tool. As a physical education teacher, we have an amazing opportunity and responsibility to create the new generation of strong, resilient youth, providing them with the toolkit of weapons, using useful transferable skills that can be utilized, transfer across a range of situations. What do you think? Can online physical education lessons deliver this? Sport education and challenges for the future. We need to think about this time that sometimes we shall have to be again in quarantine or social social isolation and try to find other solutions like stimulating innovation program, industrial modernization for sport enterprises to address the current social challenges. Actions promoting the well-being of citizens, including through sport and physical activity. Promote sport and physical activity in time when people are restricted to their home. Helping school and physical education teachers to continue training pupils through digital means that are effective and stimulating a healthy, active lifestyle in youth by introducing innovating solutions to stimulate physical activity. And for conclusion, our kids are facing big challenges in this world. Help the children in your life to build resilience and find their power. Continuing to exercise in safe ways will be, the, will be of utmost importance. Help them to meet those challenges with curiosity, creativity, 
compassion, and determination. Provide them with tools to better understand their own internal experiences, empowering them to skillfully and confidently respond to the changing world around them. This presentation came to establish an argument about the imbalance between the restriction imposed on the public as part of the epidemic and the ability, on the other hand, to allow him to maintain an active and healthy lifestyle. This lifestyle is the basis for preventing and treating chronic mobility and can maintain it and improve immune function and physical strength may also protect us from COVID-19 damage. Thank you all. Namaste. Thank you, ma'am. I oh, sincerely oh, thank Dila, David, and Adam for this wonderful address on the topic sports education during COVID-19 and challenges for the future. Ma'am, we are very much delighted to have you and it was a wonderful session and uh, your PPT presentation was very nice and it was very unique. And then you briefed the future challenges and then how we will be able to tackle the COVID-19 pandemic by, by engaging ourselves into the sports and then various other games and then other perspectives. And you also very, very unique manner and then it was very nice. And I have to congratulate you for this wonderful session. And we are very much happy to have you here. And in the future also, the Department of Sports Education and then the Physical Education and Sports of Tamil Nadu Dr. Ambedkar Law University is delighted to work with you in the future initiatives also. And please join us in the future initiatives also. And we are very much happy to have you today. And then thank you, ma'am. Thank you for this excellent presentation. Thank you so much. Thank you. Namaste. Namaste. All the best. All the best Namaste. for all your future interviews. Thank you so much. Thank you. Now I will invite our third speaker. Thank you so much, ma'am. Thank you so much. Very good performance. Now I will invite our third speaker, Ms. Roslyn G. Amiro, World Athletics Lecturer, Head Coach, Far Eastern University, Philippines. Madam will be addressing on topic. Sir will be addressing on topic physical fitness and strength for college, university students during COVID-19. And it is one of the very important topic, this physical strength for college, university students during this time of pandemic. It's a very, very important topic. Now I read the profile of Rosaline J. Amiro. Welcome you, sir. Welcome you. Namaste to the session. Good afternoon. Uh, I can share my screen. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. I will, I will read out your profile. Then you can start making a presentation. Ma'am is affiliated with the World Athletic, Athletics Lecture. Ma'am, ma'am. Ma with World Athletics International Federation of Physical Education, Fitness and Sports Science Association. Ma'am's work, working experiences are a World Athletic Lecturer, World Athletics Asian Development Center, Head Coach, Far Eastern University, Track and Field Lumen, Strength and Conditioning, Far Eastern University, Strength and Conditioning Center, Head Coach, Head Coach at San Sebastian College, Recolocus, Track and Field Lumen, Head Coach, Philippine Cultural College, Track and Field Boys and Girls, Previous work, Head Coach for Women, Philippine Amateur Track and Field Association, Enlisted Personnel, Philippine Air Force, Head Coach, College of St. Benilde, Track and Field Lumen, Educational Attainment, Postgraduate SY 2015 to 2016 completed teacher certification program for Eastern University in Reyes ST Sample Manila. College 1996 to 2003 graduate Bachelor of Science in Commerce, Magic Management for Eastern University Manila. And Ma'am has done a lot of achievements as a coach and she has produced a lot of uh, sports persons in various, various fields of athletics and then in various sports and teams. Ma'am has with the professional development. And Ma'am has served in various international committees and then national committees. And then she has also uh, guided many sports persons. And she was uh, lectured in various international and local events. And the international webinar on latest trends in athletics, recent events I'm, I'm, I'm narrating now. And international webinar on latest trends on sports coaching. 
and mammals are been a resource person for various seminars trainings international webinars and various events and then uh, she is the officiating amazing experiences like a race director of several fund run and road race companies organizing sports events in both private and public organizing sports events for public works department senior citizens and exclusively for women and then technical officiating some competition results encoder in several competition local and national level results encoder in 2005 para games and sea games so we are very much happy to welcome rose queen j hamiro ma'am to this session to present on a topic the physical fitness and strength for college and university students during covid 19 thank you ma'am the department of physical education and then sports of tamil nadu dr ambedkar law university chennai is very much delighted and happy to have you in this session welcome you ma'am warm welcome to you uh, thank you for the wonderful introduction um, good afternoon everybody i would like to thank you yes ma'am yes ma'am you can share your content your voice is audible your video is also clear you can share your content fine you you do you already see my screen yes ma'am yes ma'am yes yes, yes. you're kind of to share yes, yes yes it's perfect yes. you can start you can start thank you very much uh good afternoon everybody i would like to thank the tamil nadu dr ambedkar law university for organizing this international virtual seminar and also i would like to thank dr k parama sivam for inviting me to be one of the speaker of, for today's webinar um When the pandem- pandemic starts here in my country, it, it is almost two months of the second semester st- uh, class starting, and the national government announced uh, for a lockdown or community quarantine. Then all students are sending back to their home, and the mode of learnings are changed to online learning. And also in my university, all student athletes must also send them back to their home because all the remaining uh political competition was cancelled and the face to face training is not allowed until today i think that i uh, there's a government um rules that until december there's no political competition or any sports competition here in the philippines in india last august 29 2020 the ministry of home affairs releases a guidelines on unlock four Uh, for opening up for the more activities in the areas outside the containment zone has been issued and here are here are some of the guidelines in according uh, in according to the academic concerns then all the schools and colleges universities and other educational institutions including the uh, co- the coaching and will remain closed for students and regular class activities till september 30 they are allowed to have a classes via online or distance learning and also there's a uh, there's a 50 of 50% of teaching and non teaching staff will be allowed to go to the school for online teaching and telecounseling so until at such time at this month uh it means that my dear teacher in india and my dear students you have still September 30 to stay at home and do online classes and work from home. So it means we have a lot of time to spend sitting, sitting, and also um, doing online class and work from home. Because of the COVID-19, we consume of our time on sitting and lying position instead uh, inside of our home, watching TV, uh, playing in mobile phones, work from home and sleeping but the world health organization wants every individual to stay active during this pandemic that's why the world health or the who collaborate with the ioc international olympic committee and united nations the un using the team healthy together this is a collective effort and global collaboration to reduce the spread and impact of covid-19 And the IOC president said sports can save lives they have seen over the last few months just how important sports and physical activity uh, are for health and well-being 
This three agency is calling all people everywhere to unite and be hashtag healthy together. Last June 20, June, last June 23, 2020, there's a collaboration of Olympic, uh, celebration of Olympic Day. The, uh, the WHO and IOC work together to improve health uh, through sports and promotes to be active in a daily routine. Uh, this uh, this uh, Olympic Day workout, this, uh, their program is a world largest 24 hours digital workout participated by Olympians, athletes, and fans all over the globe come together to be active. So they use athletes to promote uh, to promote health and to be active inside their home. And also the World Health also promote the hashtag be active, hashtag healthy at home. It encourage every individual to stay active inside their home. Okay, normally work from home and online class will lead to prolonged sitting position and screen time. So as per uh who when you are doing your work from home or class online class so you have to check your regular seating posture and also make a break up uh break up your seating and stand up while working on the phone or watching tv so for every one hour of seating position or working uh uh in your screen you have to break up and or to make a break not to just stress, just to just to have three to four minutes of activity or um or a light intensity physical movement such as walking or stretching or maybe dancing with your favorite music or any exercise for just three to four minutes in every hour of prolonged sitting. So it will help your muscle and and improve blood circulation and muscle activities. And also, instead of uh, just stay sitting and lying on your bed, just walk, uh, walk and down, walk and up and down the stairs, and maybe running on your homes inside your home, and do some stretching and dancing, or something skipping rope, or something that uh, that will help you to to energize. Okay, to, from uh, a break from your one hour or prolonged sitting. The WHO recommended amount of activities for for the adults uh, ages uh, 18 years old and above. All adults should do at least 150 minutes of moderate intensity physical activity throughout the week. So it means you can have 30 minutes of five sessions, maybe five days in a week of a moderate inten intensity physical activity or at least 75 minutes of vigorous intensity physical activity throughout the week. So you can have 25 minutes three times a week of vigorous intensity physical activity. For additional health benefits, adults should increase their moderate intensity physical, uh, intensity physical activity to 300 minutes per week or equivalent. For developing and maintaining musculoskeletal health and muscle strengthening activities involving major muscles groups should be done on two or more days a week. In addition, older adults with poor mobility should do physical activity to enhance balance and prevent falls on three or more days per week. If the regular students or a person or a regular person is finding difficult how to stay active during the COVID-19, how much more for student athletes who are required to maintain the high level of fitness? Many students athletes are scared to lose their athletic scholarship and other benefits like monthly allowance, pre-dormitory and meals. That's why, that's why student athletes finding their ways to have their, their own training. In America, the NCAA conducted conducted the NCAA student uh, student athletes COVID nineteen well being survey. It, it was participated by 
three division of NCAA, and also uh, all genders and different races. The respond, uh, there is a 37,658 respondent, student athletes respondent. So aside from aside from physical, uh, aside from emotional and mental aspect, there's other uh, challenges that the student athletes is facing right now, which is this is this stu uh, student athletes number one problem or barrier to their training, to have their training, is the local regulation regarding travel, facilities closure, and public gathering. I think this is not only for the for America, but also in, in other countries. Also in the Philippines, here in my country, this is also our problem because of the uh, indefinite situation or decision of the government of the uh, status of the community quarantine here in the Philippines. And also in the Metro Manila, the cap, uh, almost the capital of the the our country is all the uh, sports facilities is used for a uh, COVID-19 facilities. So we ha we don't have a, a sports facility right now to use for our training. And all athletes here are now sending back home, which is staying in the province. So the problem is how this student athlete can train and maintain their fitness if there's no uh, right facility and equipment to use. But there is uh, some athlete or person that, which is physically excel during pandemic, like Kirsten Warholm, a 24 years old 400 meter hurdler, hurdler Norwegian, uh, who made a five record in a single run in the Diamond League. As you can see here in the result remark, there is a five uh, record here, which is the AR, is the area area record, WL is the world lead, DLM is the diamond league record, then MR is the meet record, and PB is the personal best. In just one run, last August 23, so it means there is a way for everybody, not only for the athletes, even the, the regular person, the regular exerciser or non-exerciser can have a way to do um, uh, physical activities and not only first and home, but also uh, Joshua Cheptegi of Uganda, who broke the world record in 5,000 meters last August 14 in Diamond League. And also in last July 2020, the team of Nike Bowerman Track Club, a female, or by 100, 150 meters relay, also broke the world record. So it means there is a way, even there is a pandemic. Maybe this athlete accept and adapt the situation. According to Ibhina Bindra, an Indian Olympic shooting gold medalist and also a member of IOC Athletes Commission, Commission member, he believes that athletes have the power to adapt to the tough situation they current phase. No wonder why the I, why the WHO collaborates with IOC or have a partnership with the IOC because the athletes have the natural characteristic that we need of the everybody right now in this trying time, which is how to adapt, power to adapt the situation. And he advised, so I think it is about accepting the situation, adapting to the situation, and trying to do the best in the given circumstances. That is all that you can do. This is the thing that we can do right now. And also he said, as an athlete, you have to adapt to changing situation. That is a skill that elite athletes possess. I think this is probably the time for all athletes to bring those skills out. So I think not only the not this is not only for the athletes, but also for everybody, for each one of us to, to develop these skills, to possess these skills, to adapt 
to accept and adapt this situation. And now, for the for the college students, what what are the benefits of ex, uh, to do exer, to do an exercises? So there's a six benefits of uh, exercise for college students. Uh, at for, the the first and most obvious benefits of exercising is in college is that college students that exercise are less likely to gain weight due to stress and poor diet in college. Many students worry about gaining weight and by uh, doing regular cardiovascular exercise, it will help for you not to gain weight. And also it can help the college student to sleep well. Exercise can help you to get tired by the time you go to, you go to bed. A healthy dose of, health, uh, of sleep helps you function better, improving your concentration and effectiveness. Just don't exercise immediately before you want to sleep. Do it at least one hour before bedtime. And also, exercises can boost your academic performance because by doing, for example, doing a cardiovascular exercise can improve a person's blood circulation, which affects the amount of oxygen that, in, that reaches the person's brain. The more oxygen your brain gets, the better it, work, it works. That's better, the easier learning just by taking a few minutes each day to exercise. And the fourth one is to boost your immune system. In college, if you get sick, you miss a class or, lower, or, or you will have a lower concentration. And being ill can seriously throw you off during an exam. Spending 20 to 30 minutes of at least 33 times a week exercising has been shown to help prevent sickness. And also it can decrease stress. Many people find that exercise reduces the amount of stress that they feel. They feel. Why? Because exercise releases endorphins. As the our first speaker uh, already discussed regarding the happy hormones. So this exercise can release these hormones, a uh, happy hormones, which the brain's chemical that make you feel happy and relaxed. It, and also uh, doing exercise uh, during the college, it lasts after the college uh, time. Exercise is an investment in your health. It reduces the risk of heart disease, diabetes, and many other prevent medical conditions. It improves your quality of life overall and getting into habit now will help you to keep those healthy choices later. Okay, now, can exercise really boost your GPA? For those students out there, do you think can exercise boost your GPA? Okay, it can help. It can help you. One, because exercise increases the glycogen level, which your brain needs all that academic heavy loads. Heavy load is a uh, mental, mental load and the physical load. And also exercise is increase the size of your brain. The regular aerobic exercise increase the size of hippocampus, which is associated with memory and learning. But by just doing six months to a year of regular aerobic exercise can show a measurable increase in the size of the prefrontal context and medial temporal context, both associate with memory and thinking. And also exercise improved chemical balance, which is the happy hormones. And, you know, just doing uh, 150 minutes per week of exercise, it will help your brain, it will improve your brain's memory and your learning capacity. But there's a, I think there's a something missing here. Even though you have your daily routine, exercise daily routine, but you miss your classes, it will not earn you a good grades. So you have to attend your class, okay? Even though you do exercise morning and afternoon and you didn't attend your classes, you will not pass, okay? So do not make 
exercise uh, alone, just make it to be with your uh, uh, your 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 eagerness to learn, your urge to learn. Okay, so to improve your GPA, make it sure that you also attend your class and make a study habit. Okay. Then now I know everybody now really wants to do an exercise. Maybe later or tomorrow because they hear that that exercise can help their GPA. They they improve their their memory and also their learning capacity. Okay. To plan your exercise routine, don't forget the FIT principle. F I P T. -E. F for frequency, which is how often you, you exercise. Maybe five times a week, two times, two to three times a week of strength training, something like that. Then intensity, how hard you exercise. Light, moderate, or vigorous. Then time, how long you exercise. It's the duration of your workout, like 30 to 60 minutes, or you want more uh, for every session. And T for type. What kind of exercise you want to do? Endurance training, strength training, balance, or flexibility. What type of exercise? There is an endurance. For endurance exercise, also known as aerobic exercise, it's helped develop stamina. It can also improve the function of the heart and lungs. Strength training, also known as resistance training, causes contraction of the muscles via external resistance. Strength training your muscle not only make you stronger, but also stimulate bones growth, lower body blood sugar, assist the weight control, improve balance and posture, and reduces stress and pain in the lower back and joint. And flexibility training is the range of motion in the joint of group or group of joints or the ability to move joints effectively through complete range of motion. Then for balance training, one form of appropriate, uh, this is a one form of proprioceptive exercise uh, shown to be prevent ankle injury or re-injury and reduce the risk of ligament problem in athletes. Improving your balance make you feel steadier on your feet and help to prevent falls. Okay. Now the question is, how to how I, as a student how I can motivate myself to do training? You can do solo if you want. You can ask your partner, to ask someone to be your training partner or in group. So this is the new normal now. If you are inside your room or inside your home, you can do it online. Ask ask your friend. In your generation, in your generation students, it calls squad goal. So you have a squad goal. What that what what kind of goal to be a healthier and fitter at the end of this pandemic? So you can improvise equipments like uh, this is my athlete who use uh, chairs for uh, mobility and also a wooden hurdles, a cemented dumbbells. Or barbells, then wooden hurdles, then a gallon of water with bamboo stick to do a squat, then a bag with a uh, full of books and a uh, bottle with the uh, uh, water so that it can it can add more uh, weight. So you can you can use your environment as your training ground and your equipment. Okay, flexibility and mobility. The difference of flexibility and mobility. Flexibility is the ability of the muscle to lengthen. The mobility, on the other hand, is the ability of the joint to move actively through the range of motion. Flexibility, you can do yoga, you can do tai chi to improve your flexibility, and also you can use... Uh, Dynamic. Oh. 
There's something wrong with my screen. It's not moving. Yes, ma'am. If I use my annotation, uh, the screen was freeze. Ma'am, your slides are clear. Your slides are clear. Okay. Uh, during the dynamic warm up, you can use it. Uh, actually, dynamic stretching, you can use it as dynamic warm up. This is what you should do doing before your exercise to raise your heart rate and body temperature in preparation for your workout. During this type of warm up, uh, you're moving through stretches and light exercise without stopping. It is the opposite of the passive stretching. So it will help to increase mobility and range of motion so you can get deeper into your exercise. As you can see, I use a limited space. You can do this in your home. If you are uh, non-exercises, this is uh, quite difficult at your first attempt or your first try of this dynamic warm-up or dynamic stretching. Okay. In endurance training, uh, this is your cardio workout. Uh, many people ask question how we can do an endurance training so as an example this chinese ran inside his room and you know he do a ultra marathon inside his home ultra marathon is 42 kilometers this is to keep him healthy and to cope up with the pandemic He ran 42K inside his home. As you can see, he, he have a wearable watch. That's why he continue moving his uh, arms because it's count it's counting the number of steps and number of, uh, and also the distance. And if you have uh, inflatable or something uh, indoor swimming pool, so, you can tie yourself and do your swimming as uh, swimming as your cardio workout, and your bike, uh, a stationary bike or indoor state indoor bicycle. So and also uh, it's kind of a resistant run, resistant run, and also you you can have your Zumba, aerobics, Thai boxing, etc. And if you feel bored, if you feel bored, you can combine all these exercise. For example. Uh, for running, you have running, then after you run, then do a bike. So you, you will have your duathlon. Then you have an inflatable uh, swimming pool, then swim, bike, then run. You, you will have your triathlon even inside your home. So you can find ways to improve your endurance training. And I want to show this to you because uh, we started our training last June, but it is on and off uh, of the road because of the quarantine situation of the Philippines. As you can see, our first uh, virtual run is uh, last August 26, and my athlete's uh, time for 10 kilometers is 44.41. And after a month, she improved at least... Uh, almost two minutes in her 10k kilometer or 10 kilometer run so it means uh you can find way how to run even not all the time in the room but don't forget the social distancing when you are especially outdoor uh when you walk you need a 15 feet uh distance with somebody 
or with your friends or with someone but when you when you when you're jogging or slow jogging or slow run sorry is at 33 feet or at least 10 meters away then 65 feet or 20 meters away when uh, running fast or cycling at a fast pace so the distance is depend on how fast are you are you are moving and also in the formation of uh, running or not only running the formation of the team so running behind each other is less safe so it should be side by side or running in a staggered formation so this is the more safer uh, safer formation that you can do in the outside uh, sports and exercise uh, activity now in circuit training you can see uh after the five kilometer run she done she do a circuit training and uh she's my athlete a silver medalist in C last year she gave 2019 Southeast Asian Games in 3,000 people chase and also bronze medalist in 5,000 meter run so as you can see she used a chopping board a wooden chopping board for for extra intensity, for ex, ex, uh, extra heavy. Right. Circuit training and the HIIT or the HIIT is almost similar. The difference is HIIT or the HIIT uh, stands for, uh, this refers to a tough, quick, and intense burst of exercise followed by a short recovery period. This type of training gets and keep your heart rate up. According to the research, uh, they found out that heat burned 25 to 30 percent more calories than the other form of exercise. So it means heat may help you burn more calories than traditional exercise or burn the same amount of calories in a shorter amount of time. So that is the difference with the circuit training and they advise heat for more for you to burn more calories. This video was sent by my athletes because still we have an online and offline training. So I have to monitor them. So they sent me the video of their offline training. So their training is uh, is individualization because uh, now one training will not feel will not fit to all because of the different situation and the different um the different uh, uh situation of the athletes especially the quarantine uh situation of their places make it sure that the equipment or the modified equipment is safe.
na for agility training. Okay, these are four, four cone drills. Uh, if you don't have cones, you can mark on the ground or some of my athletes use an empty can of sardines to use as a marker. So agility is the ability to move quickly and change direction with ease. This describes both physical and mental agility. You can also T-drills, lat lateral drills. And also, not only cone drills, you can, you can do a ladder drills. You can only mark on the ground. Use chalk or something that can mark like a ladder. Uh, sometimes we as coaches, we made a video, training video for our athletes for them to uh, follow. Because sometimes it's difficult on the spot to give them the instruction. Sometimes their perception, uh, the perception of the athletes is different. So I had we send the video for, to them so they, they can study the video, the exercises before the online training. Okay, if you want an exercise series, for example, for back series, you, you want to exercise one area of your body, you can pick a different type of body parts that you wish to exercise. There's a lot more on the internet, so you can search it. There's a, a mountain climbing series, land series, uh, even the squat class or burpee series, there's a lot of series of exercises that you can follow or you can search in the internet, in the YouTube. That is the power of technology right now. Okay, in the plyometrics, okay, a, a plyometrics is the exercise is right now. Oh, sorry. Okay. okay.
Okay, in the plyometrics, you can do a low intensity plyometrics and the high intensity. As you can see, my athletes are doing his uh, in place bounding inside her room. A plyometric exercise is a quick, powerful movement that starts with an eccentric action and is immediately followed by concentric action. Performing plyometric exercises increases muscular power, which translates the higher jumps and faster sprint time. Combining plyometric exercises with resistance training is a way to maximize power and performance. For strength training, if your student or uh, athlete is in the in this kind of place, which is they, they have a uphill run, so it is a strength endurance. And if they're in the beach, so they can run in the sun and also in the water. Sorry. There is a resistance there. So even if you are inside your home, you can do a strength training using uh, something that you can see inside your home. You can improvise. The one gallon of water is already four kilos. As you can see, this is my um, young distance athlete using a uh, two gallon of uh, soil and um, sand with bamboo stick. <laughs> And these are two pail of water with a bamboo stick. So you can do a squat. And you can use stone also for extra intensity. Okay. Aside from doing the exercises, so you have 
to make your own home fitness test so you can see or you can monitor yourself if you are improving the physical fitness. Uh, that's all and thank you very much. Thank you, ma'am. It was a wonderful session and your PPT, your presentation and uh, various ideas, the informations and uh, the presentations and then various dissemination of knowledge you shared on the topic physical fitness and strength for college and university students during COVID-19 pandemic is really a need of the heart. So this contemporary issue is what we are facing right now due to the pandemic and the lockdown. It is very important area to be addressed for the college students and then the school students and then the various university students because of the lockdown everybody is undergoing a mental stress and various other issues so this is a really a good answer to them it's really a good counseling i, I good counseling to them and uh, I, I hope that many people have gotten good exposure through your presentation and you have thrown light on various areas and the presentation was also very unique and it was very nice and i want to congratulate you and we are very much delighted to have you in this session and we are very much happy to have you ma'am and in behalf of the department of physical education and sports i congratulate you and i thank you for uh, spend, spending your valuable time in presenting in such a wonderful session thank you so much ma'am. thank you so much thank you thank you so much so now i invite our fourth speaker dr veeramani chidambaram sir yeah. Senior lecturer. Parang ano lang, 40 minutes? Senior lecturer, Physical Education Sports, Institute of Technical Education, Singapore. Welcome you, sir. Wanna come? Uh, sir will be addressing on a topic. Need of co-coordination in movement patterns. Sir will be addressing on a topic. Need of coordination in movement patterns. And now I will read out the profile of our Fourth speaker, Veeramani Chinnamaram, sir. Sir has done his education in 1998 diploma in building and real estate management, NGE and, Pol and Polytechnic, Singapore. 2003 IAAF CECS Level 1 Coaching Course, Singapore. 2003 IAAF CECS Level 2 Coaching Course, Sprints and Hurdles. 2004 Diploma in Track and Field Coaching, Johannes Gutenberg University, Mainz, Germany. 2005 IAAF Academy Diploma in Chief Coach. The program was delivered by NTU and MLE IAAF. 2016, Sir has done his postgraduate diploma in Sports Business Management from Sheffield Alam University. 2018, Degree in Sports and Exercise Science Edinburgh Napier University. Experience 2014, Current Senior Lecturer, Physical Education Institute of Technical Education, Curriculum Design, Data Analytics, Sports Performance Model. And from 2008 to 2010, Technical Director, Singapore Athletic Association. 2006 to 2008, Assistant Technical Director, Singapore Athletic Association. A. 2005 to 2006, Assistant Head Coach, Singapore Athletic Association. Sir, as having a lot of International Association of Athletics Federations and IAAF appointments. In 2006 to 2010, he was a post coordinator between IAAF Regional Development Center, Jakarta and local institutions. A director of IAAF Accredited Training Center in Singapore, 2005 to 2010, 2007 till present IAAF CECS Level 1 election projects, an IAAF Youth Seminar Training Competition Lead Presenter, World Athletics ADC Jakarta Strength and Conditioning Seminar, one of the lead presenters, an International Para Olympic Committee IPC appointments also sir, has been appointed, present IPC Introduction to Para Sports Coaching Course Educator, 2016 to 2017 in Singapore. IPC Introduction to Para Athletics Coaching Course Educator Project 2017 in Singapore. And Sir has done a lot of contribution in the Southeast Asian Games, Indonesia. And then uh, First Asian Youth Games, Singapore. And then Asian Athletic Championship, Jordan. Key Athletes and Team Performance Profile. Sir has done a lot of uh, long jump performance highlights, Asian Para Games men. And then uh, Raymond Sportley, 100 m and 400M hurdles. And then Sir has trained a lot of uh, sports persons like uh, Suhairi, Suhani, Raymond Sportley. Skills and abilities. Dark to fish analytics, analysis software program, Microsoft Office program, communication, 
sir will speak english and then germany and then tamil high performance athlete career and saa national senior athlete highlights saa national junior athlete highlights and then sir has done lot of contribution to the sports in various perspectives in various fields our hope speaker viramani chidambaram sir to begin his session welcome you sir we are very much happy to have you in this session and we are very much delighted and happy to welcome you to begin the session thank you very much thank you very much um just let me share my slides yes please Are you able to see my slides? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I'm able to see your slides. Okay. Yes, thank you very much. Um, first, I'd like to thank um, Dr. Ambika Law University for hosting this uh, webinar uh, during this uh, COVID situation we have uh, globally, and as well as to Mr. Dr. Paramasivam for giving the invitation to share uh, on topics that is close to my heart. Uh, as a coach, uh, I've been involved for almost twenty over years. Uh, that has been uh, ever evolving uh, and. to share with you guys what i have um, learned over the years and as well as to see um where this practice uh, or the theory to practice can lead us to okay um i think um it also give us during this um, covid situation uh, to do a lot of reflection in how we have been practicing our sports uh, a kind of a reset button that can be given us an opportunity to see look uh, what have i been doing all this while and what do i need to do um, going forward uh, which could be could you could have known about it but uh, probably you might not have paid uh, sufficient attention to it um uh, on that on that note um i like to draw your attention towards our coordination of movement pattern uh, do we, we know that in, in sports performance uh, in in general we know that uh, many factors contributes to the success of that performance um and we know that uh, different um it's like a jigsaw puzzle basically uh, putting different parts of that um factors to come together to form that perfect looking uh, picture that gives the performance uh, or orientation in that aspect uh, i believe strongly that coordination plays a vital role and as well as to play a important role to create that missing link to make the performance successful so how do we uh, define movement okay uh, when we say uh, how performance are coordinated uh, definitely we know that a uh, perception and movement process are key perception basically what i understand about it and thereafter what is the movement that will be required for that particular task to be completed uh, effectively will become the key for well coordinated movement um and how does that takes place um we know that uh, central nervous system our um, cns system uh works perfectly or the other key driver to this um and it doesn't work alone um it has to rely on a storage or, or information hub which is known as cerebellum a one of our parts in our uh, brain that contains this information when these two systems um collide or come together a targeted uh, performance uh, takes place um let me draw to you towards this uh short video loop i uh, just wanted to get a look at a performance here so let the look video to look a little bit just observe the lady who is trying to save the ball okay um to me uh, that movement is what we will define as a, a well coordinated overall performance um many of you know um that to perform that uh, there's a series of process the sticks place and the series of process looks like this okay um when the ball crosses over to their half in a volleyball game i think many of us are familiar with a volleyball game the objective is to ensure that the ball doesn't land on your court if not you lose a point so as a as one of the key players uh, she has seen the ball coming over um so she knows that she need to take a decision to know what she has to do with that movement so what she did was to lean forward to ensure that the ball is kept alive on her half so that's a drive factor that means there's a factor that she has put into place then she has to orientate herself towards the ball so that she knows that she can get in time to reach and to intercept the ball then she has to make a decision in volleyball we know that we can use both the hands and the legs as a unit in your body to receive the ball 
So she has to decide whether to use hands or leg. And when the moment she decides that she wants to use the hand, and then she what she does is she executes the action. And in the end, the result is the ball is bounced off her hand and it stays alive on her court. So this process uh, goes through uh, various of levels, uh, basically from emotional level, I mean the decision to take that she has to intercept the ball, to the cognition level where she makes the decision to say, look, this is what I have to do, and to a psychomotor level, which is what the legs coming out to reach out to the ball. So in this whole process, uh, we know that it has been not something which she did it there and there, but it was a well-coordinated, well-trained um, movement that has been practiced many times so that when the need uh, uh, arises, she know what exactly she need to do uh, as a form of um, a task, uh, movement task. So this all can be only be possible because it is in the storage hub as movement, which coordinates together with the central nervous system. So um, what does the central nervous system does as a main priority? Um, we know that the central nervous system is a, a processing abilities, it's a processing network, big network, that has a various of other areas to do, not just um, sports alone. Uh, it has a physiology and biochemistry process, anticipation and control, um, thoughts, imaging, um, in, inner and outer process of perception, what's happening around us, and probably even uh, information and feedback processes. And we know that all this takes place in, excuse me, um, it, all this takes place to allow uh, what we call in skills that it moves from uh, unconscious incompetent state to unconscious competent state. So if you look at it, it goes through from unconscious incompetent state to conscious incompetent to conscious competent to unconscious competent. Basically, from not knowing how to perform the skill to performing the skill without having the need to rehearse it in the brain. So this is what we call the, one of the key area of uh, central nervous system. So in order to do that, uh, of course, it will also continuously design uh, and store this activity. So this is what we mean that you have to practice more regularly. This design of movement is stored in our brain. So that helps us to retrieve it up whenever we require at a time of need or at a time under pressure. Okay, so what is this um, movement should look like? Okay, we know that our whole objective of movement is all about um, contraction and relaxation, basically intramuscular coordination and intermuscular coordination. When this movement takes place uh, regularly, we know that as a functional stability. So in order to have a functional movement, which can be designed in such a way that it helps us to move in our basic level, it allows us to move to the next level of that, which is the performance level. And of course, together with the skills that we acquire, performance becomes a lot more um, accurate or becomes a lot more uh, precise in what we have to do. So to aid all this area is what we call motor coordination. So in our motor coordination, when it gets into a functional stability level, it gives you that drive to perform well in that movement. So for us, what do we call movement pattern then? Okay, movement pattern um, encompasses this uh, diagram. Uh, let me pause here for a moment, just let you all have a look at it. Um, so that you know what is this. Some of you might have seen this before. Um, some of you might have been familiar uh, with the diagram at a corner here. Um, so let me pause for a while. Okay, so um, movement coordination uh, has two domain uh, where it uh, requires. One is what we call the energy determination uh, domain, another one is the information orientation. Um, what you can see also see is speed, um, which is critical in most of our sports, uh, when we participate in, um, we know that uh, that becomes a criteria. Uh, when that speed is an important criteria, we realize that coordination is the most important aspect that drives that information orientation for speed. So here, when we're looking for a good coordination movement, which is essential for what we call in overall coordination of the movement, 
uh, coordination of how these things come together will play a critical role. So again, what is coordination? Coordination can come from uh, various factors. Uh, we'll share on that. So when you want to perform a movement task, we know that coordination goes through what we call a coordination skills. So there's a set of skills that is a coordinative skills that helps you to perform the task. Um, this task can be performed in two situations. One will be what we call as motor control situation uh, skills or adaptation skills. Uh, if I put it in the other way around, uh, motor control means it's called closed skills. Uh, adaptation means open skills. So we know about closed skills and open skills. So these are the situations where we will be applying our skills pattern. Of course, we also have the other half or the other area where we look into is what we call as coordinative conditions. There always will be a condition in terms of when this coordination, uh, coordinative skills will be applied. Uh, of course, that to take place, we need to have uh, information requirement. So how the information is received and also what is the motor pressure situation that will be requiring us to overcome when we perform the movement task. Um, let me go into a little bit more detail on these two areas, movement coordination, uh, coordinative skills and coordinative condition. Let me start with coordination, uh, coordinative skills first. Um, like we mentioned, uh, control ability is a standardized movement in which it's predominantly technical. Uh, close spots, uh, like close disciplines, like you can talk about long jump, uh, javelin throws, so where the movement has done too much of um, outside influence. Uh, in contrast to that, you have adaptive skills, uh, or adaptational abilities, where or, or we call it open skills, where the sport is constantly uh, changing situation. Like it could be um, like if you take a running event, you're talking about the middle distance races where 800,005, or you want to talk about uh, game concepts, uh, hockey, soccer, where the situation is constantly changing. So let me give you a quick example of some of these various coordinative abilities that it can be trained among uh, our athletes. Uh, if you look at uh, table tennis, it's a great example where all these uh, seven areas that I've laid out uh, can give you an uh, indication. So let me start with um, the first one, movement uh, coupling. Uh, movement coupling basically is a coordination between um, upper limb and lower limb, uh, basically the entire body that the body is able to coordinate with one another to perform the skill uh, as, as effectively as possible. Uh, next in line, what we call is kinesthetic differences. Kinesthetic differences is basically knowing the differences uh, or differentiation, basically, uh, of the um, speed of the ball coming towards you, uh, how much you need to hit back, you know. Um, so again, that differentiation to uh, anticipate after that. Uh, Balancing uh, is also a critical aspect of coordination. Uh, if you look at the uh, player in the black t-shirt, where a moment that he stumbles and he tried to catch his balance and still kind of returns um, the rally. So again, that is also important. Spatial awareness or spatial orientation. Um, again, knowing where to reach um, in in that in that game uh, to ensure that you can receive the ball and as well as to return. Uh, the ball uh, is becomes a critical factor as well for coordination skills. So this is also another area that we have to look into. Uh, rhythm sensing, um, rhythm sensing uh, could be anything from the game going from a, a slow rhythm or slow rally exchange to increasing that rally exchange. So again, getting into a momentum that gives you that constant rhythm sense that you want the ball to constantly travel to put pressure on your opponents. Um, another one that we look for is optimal reaction. Optimal reaction is um, not just from the player themselves, but could be in the, from the surroundings. Sometimes you have distractions uh, from the around uh, spectators. So again, how can I optimally manage uh, and to that uh, arousal and, and react uh, optimally as well to sure, ensure that I'm staying in the game? And of course, finally, uh, situational adjustment. Situational adjustments is basically, it could be anything from losing a point um, to uh, a, a, a change in your racket. You know, uh, maybe the, the, the racket that you've been using, it's not the one that you've always been using or familiar. So these kind of situational changes 
you're able to adjust accordingly to give you that optimal performance. Of course, when you look for open skills, sorry, closed skills, um, anything from movement coupling all the way up to rhythm sensing uh, has a vital role to uh, doing well. Um, and for open skills, anywhere from body balance all the way up to situational awareness uh, gives you a little bit more control in how you can manage. So as coaches and as, as probably as, uh, as an athlete going forward, knowing how my body requires the coordination is important. But this is only just one area that we talked about. Um, they also what we call the other half is the coordinative uh, performance requirements. Um, I've broken up into three areas. One is information uh, requirement. You have balance requirement. And of course, the last one will be motor pressure uh, conditions. So the three areas that I've mentioned. So again, the first one of first will be information requirement. Uh, basically, how our information is coming in. So this is what we call uh, receptors or analyzers. We have the eyes that works as the um, form of a sensory bot that receives information and progress to our brain for processing. But that's not the only one that comes to uh, receives information. We also have our acoustic hearing abilities. Uh, we have uh, touch, tactile abilities. Um, so these are some of the things that helps you to receive information um, from outside. But internally, uh, what takes place is what we call as um, kinesthetic. So basically, our receptors in our joints, so that they know when to have that reflex, that quick reflex and um, fast reflex. This has an important role as well to play. And finally, our inner ear balance that helps you to um, manage your overall um, structural balance. Uh, when you go into balance requirement, uh, that this part that we talk about here. A moment, sorry, I went too much ahead. Um, here, balance requirement. Um, this is basically when I'm receiving this information, um, what is my position? Maybe I could be in uh, two leg support. I could be uh, in, in single leg support. I could be holding an equipment or I might be standing in a, in, a, in, a, in a floor that is not stable. So these are some of those challenges you have uh, while you are still receiving information through the five um, areas. Of course, when you move on to the other part of it is uh, under what pressure condition do I need to perform them? So while doing this, there's what we call as um, pressure, precision pressure. So remember, again, precision means how accurately I can get uh, the ball or the movement done under all these uh, situations. Uh, time pressure, again, the timing sense. You know, when the ball is coming, can I time my racket to meet the ball um, in, in, in a way that it gives you the optimal recovery for you to gain a point or for you to um, challenge your opponent on the opposite side. Uh, complexity pressure, uh, it could be something like what we talk about in um, karate or, or in um, what do you call it, uh, boxing, where you can have a sequential uh, um, coordination. That means you have to give uh, a left and right uh, uppercut actions. Uh, probably it could be uh, uh, simultaneous actions where you need to use your hands and legs uh, in the same scenario. So that could be a complexity pressure. Uh, situation pressure, uh, very simple, how the weather is changing um, from uh, maybe it could be from a sunny day uh, or then suddenly the wind picks up, you have to change to the situation. And finally, load pressure, it is from the physical load as well as from your mental load. Uh, something, this is more predominantly uh, an application of uh, coming from conditioning. So all these areas, we've mentioned, uh, plays a vital role in how our performance task uh, can be done uh, or can be executed effectively. So with that in mind, uh, we go into a little bit more on how we can construct our training programs or our training uh, uh, design for our ethic. So I'm giving you an example of triple jump here. So what you can see is the technical part of the sport is where it has an approach hop, step, and jump. That is the whole technical sequence that we have for the sport. Um, the structural phase um, at the side you have where there's a run-up, uh, there's a takeoff, and then there's a preparation one for the hop, then preparation two, so to catch yourself to go forward, and so on and so forth, which will carry on for step and jump as well. What is the action required? Um, again, from acceleration, 
starting into frequency run. Uh, how should my hood look like? You know, flat drive, dorsiflexion. Um, again, in step phase, I want to have a step over, active foot plan. So again, you are laying down the action requirement um, for that uh, particular movement to take place. So what are the components of fitness I do I need to have? I need to have speed, I need to have coordination, I have to have movement stability, I need to have um, acyclic speed, I need to have strength, flexibility to encompass us as part of my conditioning. And then I can go down to write my training content. Look, in order to tackle this area, what are some of the drills or some of the uh, um, means and methods I can use to help me prepare my athlete. So this is something which allows you to lay down the training. Here, um, pretty much is talking about how do I get from the planning to the actual actualization. So again, uh, I lay down, as a, there should be a rhythm aspect of it. There should be a, a differentiation. I, mean, I know I need to differentiate where is the takeoff port is, how am I supposed to get there in time, balance. Upon landing, I want to hold myself steady reaction so that I can counter that instability at this area and move forward. So forth and so forth. So that that becomes the coordinating support that you will require for this uh, triple jump. How are you going to be done? In a basic sense, you know, running with fast rhythm, uh, horizontal takeoff with short approaches, I can do them. I can do multiple jumps and acrobatic elements. So this becomes the preparation for my coordinative support. And finally, I bring all these areas into my actual um, situation where I do practice them in the entire sequence to allow them to become actualized for a competition preparation. So this is how you bring the overall need of uh, coordination abilities into your technical aspect of your sport. And then how are you breaking it down and then so that you can train them in that sequence and ensure that ethic is understood and able to manage that man better and then you're trying to piece them together so that when they go and perform they're able to do that so with this in mind of course there are stages that we will prepare these activities we cannot just put them into a, a straightforward so there's a seven uh, steps uh, we take uh, to get there first of course we perform the skill that will be the basic uh, foundation of how any skills can be done um, then after we do, what we're going to do is we perform the skill from the rough model into getting them to be performed in a more uh, finer way and also as much as possible very well. Then what we do is once we get them going, we start adding speed to them. Because remember, most of our sport, excuse me, is about sport, uh, is about executing things at, at, uh, at, a, at a speed. Then of course, we move them into what we call working under fatigue conditions. Because again, in our sport, we don't get to just do once. And sometimes we have to, have to do it a, a few times uh, in within a space of a short time. So how am I preparing my athlete to keep that skill uh, in the past and under fatigue as well? Then of course, as well now, I'm adding not just fatigue, now I'm throwing in the pressure situations, you know, where it has to be precise, it has to be accurate. So that way, you are now forcing them under fatigue to do all these things. Once you are done with this, you are now safely moving towards what we call the best situation you have is competitions. So where you put them under a consistent um, environment where you can execute, expect them to execute them uh, consistently uh, as they're going forward. And ultimately, of course, you go into a competitions where you are doing them uh, on a regular basis. So number six can be something which you can do it as a, trials where you do a mini games within a, a society or within a, a, a group of um, um, uh, individuals and then number seven could be something which you can con uh, consider competing on a on a more higher situations like uh, state championships or district championships where you can allow them to experience that so when you do all these things of course uh, we need to keep the following in mind that when I want to organize a learning to take place, it always have starts from a static movement to dynamic. I mean, it starts from if the athlete is not able to experience them at a faster speed, then I reduce the speed. So again, to make sure that it's from static movement to dynamic movement, we start from simple to complex so that you are moving in that 
arena from making it easier for them to complete and to then challenge that so that they are constantly working to a, a whole complexity part. Slow to fast, naturally, because we want to work everything as much as possible in speed. And lastly, unloaded to loaded. The difference between unloaded and loaded. Unloaded means I'm using only body weight resistance, body resistance. Uh, loaded means I'm having, um, like I said, uh, added load. Uh, I could be wearing a weight jacket. I might be having carrying a, a weighted um, equipment to, to help me to uh, master that under resistance so that I gain um, under fatigue so that I can still perform the activities effectively. Uh, again, be careful when you're using unloaded to loaded that the the loading it is not heavy, it is very light, it's just to give um, additional stress, but not until that it disrupts the skill, uh, how it's performed. So that is most important. So again, very light load, just to um, make sure that there's a difference in that. Um, next few slides will be just sharing with you guys uh, what I have done over the years uh, as a performance, uh, how I integrated um, some of these activities uh, into my athletes. Uh, overall uh, development. So the first one is uh, a single leg reverse throw and landing. Okay, so you play one more time. So this is basically is to make sure that they are able to position and balance themselves in a posterior aspect. Um, this is a single leg uh, hip thrust action. Uh, next one is a balancing work that you have to do everything on, on single leg movement. So most of it is done with a single leg uh, as a form of exercise that we want to ensure that you are doing uh, without faltering yourself. Okay, I think uh, next one is a piston squat. Many of you would have seen it, but the only added advantage... Oh, moment. Sorry. Uh, the only uh, challenge I've thrown here is to make sure that it's done with eyes closed. So. He has to rely a lot more kinesthetically uh, how his body is in the space and how he's able to do it. Um, this is one of my para um, Paralympic athletes uh, doing uh, in the long jump. Uh, then the uh, one of the loaded exercise we do here. Okay, this is with uh, elevated platform with um, four kilo or six kilo uh, kettlebell in the hand. So this is to challenge his overall core conditions and um, overall movement. Again, some of these things that laid out here, uh, we do it at different timing of our uh, training. Uh, you can see that the training phase can be from general. Uh, what's the purpose is to develop uh, and specific is to maintain. And if you look at the, um, the, uh, the this one, the last one I just showed, uh, it becomes from a development of um, general in general phase and it becomes a specific in specific phase, it becomes part of an active uh, warm-up as well. So again, some of it takes different precedence as we move forward. Okay, here as well, um, definitely you all are familiar with deadlift, but uh, with deadlift we've done in a slightly different format. Um, okay, so again, uh, it goes from a deadlift action, and then when they pop up, they stop at a single leg drive action. So again, it's a lot more coordination uh, involved to ensure that they are doing our various. And usually what we do is we will try to uh, match up with an explosive activity with a single leg squat jump. Yeah. So again, it is done into a elevated platform. Okay. Um, and of course, uh, we are so used to moving a lot more uh, linearly forward in most of our times. Uh, we forget about that our prime mover are actually posterior aspect of it. So again, um, I will use a lot of reverse action. Uh, and here, what I use is I use an elastic band uh, and let two weight plate dangle. So that creates the uh, instability. So a lot of motor reception or motor perception go within the core exercise or core region for them to ensure that they are constantly activated to move and maintain balance throughout. Um, this is another exercise we do, uh, single leg. Um, it's very similar to the one exercise above, but instead of double support, we have a single leg support. 
and the next one is one of the my um, one of my favorite exercise because uh, we use um, double leg uh, double hand um, dumbbell to do hip uh, sorry uh, skipping exercise action sorry um, and then what we do is we progress to a single hand one dumbbell holding skipping action so this creates a lot of uh, challenge um, sorry a lot of challenge in the uh, overall movement coordination that is required okay um coming to the last set of slides um and yeah so then what do we use we use also stationary bikes uh, as a form of um to identify uh, deficiency in core strength uh core exercises in terms of coordination so both athletes are performing the exercise as fast as they can and you can observe the uh the core movement of um, this athlete on the right aspect of it and then the left aspect of it and you can see um, the difference in terms of how the body um, kind of uh, shakes back and forth. Uh, so you know that there's a lot of, um, one has a lot more control, one is using a lot more um, non-coordinated uh, hip flexor muscles. So again, the hip uh, change to move a lot. So again, uh, direction-wise, we need to um, address that as well in terms of how the coordination works. Um, moving forward, um, uh, science has done, uh, studies have shown that the more I move my uh, limbs as, as much as uh, our fingers and everything, uh, the more it triggers or works our brain muscle. So again, uh, number 12, video number 12 is more about single actions, everything. So all the four limbs are actually doing different activities. So it forces um, the athlete to coordinate a lot more than usual. Okay, and then we move into a more speed orientation exercise, which is more try to apply quick force uh, within a space as quickly as possible, which is a demand that you want to have. Here, challenge landings differently. So again, um, constant uh, movement patterns are challenged so that they are, have to do it um, constantly change. So don't, don't keep the pattern to be similar all the time so that they are familiar, but keep on changing the requirements so that the way they are challenged to work harder to keep that coordination going. Uh, this is the other one that uh, I've picked up lately. Again, uh, limbs are moving in, in, in sidewards and he has to do single leg skip over uh, and, and move it at a faster speed. So again, these are some of the challenges uh, he goes through. Uh, bear in mind, this athlete is an uh, intellectual impairment, T20 uh, athlete who has a processing, uh, information processing um, uh, challenges uh, as part of his uh, daily routine. So when we do these exercises, it is more to help him to um, grow as an athlete so that he knows how to handle uh, things. Uh, it becomes a question for his performance abilities. Sorry, last video. Okay, so this is again challenge to move within a distance. So the, the, the distance between the hurdles are extended. So you're forcing him to move uh, as fast and as accurate as possible uh, while we are moving um, into a longer uh, area of execution. So again, all these few actual videos we shared uh, are some of the examples uh, we do uh, constantly to help our athletes uh, to change. and. When you do them, uh, of course, what we are looking for is um, we are looking to optimize the process of perception. Remember, we talk about how much you know. So that uh, we want to optimize uh, the ability of the athlete, knowing that optimization of their processing. Uh, increase general concentration and, of course, also increase the general coordinating skills. The more they have them, uh, the better will it be as they transit from a youth athlete to a senior athlete. Uh, optimize a movement motion and regulation of action. When there's a control in that motion of how they move, um, the action will be definitely will be much more regulated and controlled for them to do well um, in performances. Uh, of course, when we do incorporate coordination, the creativity in solving game situation increases. So as a coach, 
when we use different um, situations um, in terms of coordination, um, you are growing the athlete's uh, ability to become creative. So that will also help you to make sure that they are able to come up with new solutions. Strengthening of the core muscle um, because of the number of challenge you put, there's a lot of interaction going between the intra and intramuscular coordination. So definitely it strengthens uh, the core muscle, which in return um, will improve your overall body stability and reduce uh, injury prevention or create uh, injury prevention, which allows uh, for you to know that you want to ensure that athlete is able to uh, be in competition mode um, on a longer phase. And of course, all this uh, is to allow the enlargement of what we call the movement variation reserve. The more of this movement variation the athlete have, like the very first video I showed uh, in the volleyball player, um, then the athlete is able to use what is required at that moment uh, to, again, to win the game or make that meaning different. Thank you for your listening. Thank you, sir, yes. for your uh, wonderful presentation. It was uh, really a thrown light on various areas on the topic need of coordination in movement patterns. We had a great exposure. All the participants had a very great exposure, I hope. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much, sir. We are delighted to have you in the session. And Thank you. It was really, it was very unique, and then you covered up all the areas, and then really the session was very long, but it was very, very, very interesting. So uh, I have to thank you for this wonderful session and the Department of Physical Education and Sports of Tamil Nadu Dr. Ambedkar Law University is delighted and it mm -hmm. makes immense pleasure to have you in this session. Sir, sir in the future also, thank in the you, future sir. course thank of initiatives also, we will be connecting uh, you and then you uh, must be a part of all of the future initiatives. Sure, it will be my pleasure very much. Thank, thank you, you so much, sir. Thank, thank you. you so much, sir. Thank you. We are uh, running in uh, short of time. So, we are not going to give any breaks for you, the participants. So, we are going to continue with the second session immediately. So, I invite our uh, fifth speaker, Teresa Hatch Sayu, lecturer come journalist. Professor of Physical Education and Sports, Lecturer uh, come journalist, speaker, educator, Lotus Life TV, Hong Kong. And ma'am will be addressing on topic nutrition and holistic tools for mental health immunity. It's a very, very important topic, which is relevant to the contemporary issues due to the pandemic crisis, what all the things we are facing. The main area she'll be covering is nutrition and uh, holistic tools for mental health, well-being and immunity. There's two points you must take it, all the participants, the nutrition and immunity. It's very relevant to the con contemporary scenario of COVID pandemic. So I will be reading the profile of our uh, next distinguished speaker. Ms. Teresa H. Sayu. Uh, Ma'am has a good uh, teaching, training, consulting experience. Uh, now, wellness educator, speaker, guest lecturer, producer at Lotus Life TV, Asia Law, guest lecturer, design and execution, City University, Achke BU, journalism, professional image and crisis. And Ma'am has a good expertise in communication, health journalism, reporters, tactics, sense and sensibility, CCTV English News, and direct produce and Train a team of interns on video production, filming, editing, and storytelling. Media strategist, consultant, and train clients on media handling, communications, and PR techniques. And man is a media specialist, news correspondent in Media I International. Now, adjunct university lecturer, HK BU, HK U Space, UIU, City U, Hong Kong. And man is very much expertised in the journalism areas. Like TV host at uh, Thomson Thomson Reuters, it's a national channel, and the host to be China series, and then pre-production scripting and revisions. Now TV host, wellness speaker, lifestyle educator at uh, Lotus Life TV, and senior news health respondent at CCTV News English International Beijing China, and US correspondent producer ATV News, and then correspondent producer CNN World Report, uh, One Cable News, anchor Channel News Asia Singapore, and reporter anchor at TVB News English. And reporter, Warf Cable News English, reporter, producer, and anchor, Columbia MO. And uh, Ma'am has also contributed to the health and wellness areas. And she has also been appointed to various positions like international wellness speaker, 
life time media health and wellness advocate media consultant and strategist for health promotion and she was a certificate from practitioner nikki level reset level soul and then energetic kinesiology and certified yoga teacher since 2007 and ma'am has a versatile experience for the past 13 years in the field of yoga and then certified integrative health and nutrition coach since 2013 and she has experience in nutrition and health care from 2013 to 2020 70 years of experience raw foods chef since 2013 in the raw foods uh, cooking and the chef oriented is oriented things also she has 17 years of experience and academic degrees and she has done his masters of arts in journalism at university of missouri cal state university she has done the bachelor of arts in journalism special skills cartoonist chinese and then she has uh, she know she knows all the languages like spanish sanskrit chinese uh, pondungua and longdo and then uh, integrative food therapy holistic and holistic enrichment and ma'am has received lot of awards uh, to notably the 2016 women leadership excellence in broadcast and then various scholarship awards she has received and then various international and national awards she has received and uh, i welcome I welcome Teresa Sayu, ma'am, from Hong Kong. Thank you. And Could we are very happy me? to welcome you. And Thank you. Uh, Thank the you. the virus COVID nineteen came from China. Now you are coming from Hong Kong to give solution. <laughs> you are coming from Hong sure. Kong to give solution for that. So sure. we are very happy to welcome you from Hong Kong. And uh, Namaste from India. We are namaste. welcoming you to India to address on a very nice topic: nutrition, foods for mental health, well-being, and immunity. Welcome you, ma'am. Yes, thank you. Could I have the share option so I could show my PowerPoint? Yes, ma'am. You can share your PowerPoint. Ah, your audio is clear. Your audio okay. is very clear. You can okay. share your PowerPoint. Good. Let's see. Share. Uh, I go to application. Just give me a little bit of time here, guys. I'm I'm good at everything else he mentioned, but just not tech stuff. <laughs> And thank you for the um, introduction there. Just connecting me. Ooh, doesn't give me ah. Uh, Application window. Yes. Yes, 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 there you go. We got it. We got it. There you go. Let's see. I prepared a very nice PowerPoint for you. So namaste again, and thank you for that wonderful introduction. So, like I said, I'm good at everything else that he's mentioned, <laughs> but not so much tech stuff. Are you seeing my PowerPoint? Like, yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Okay. I'm just getting started. Yes. From the beginning. Okay. There you go. You got it. Uh, okay. Is that good? Okay, excellent. So I'm going to skip over this, and you already mentioned all my titles, so never mind. Um, now today my main talk is tying in it with all the professors. That's just wonderful because what I'm sharing is basically a holistic toolbox that all of you going to need. I know a lot of you are in sports and athletes, and you do do a lot of movement, but I come in more of a lifestyle educator where you know I need you to do your breath. Your sound, your movement, like besides your athletic performance, a bit of quieting and food and all that. So, as the moderator mentioned, is that we'll talk about holistic toolbox on how to keep us mentally well. Now, I do understand that a lot of us are going through stress and anxiety and maybe depression and some of that stuff. So, today's session is helping you check in how you're doing and giving you some tools on how to maintain and get better and stay positive throughout we don't know how long this uncertainty is going to be all right so i am actually here to help you take care of you because everything begins with us right now i do these talks all the time just on friday i did a talk with uh, an english international school here with the parents and teacher association i go on cruise ships to talk about all kinds of things and then i've been to india to speak at conferences where you gave me awards and i've been to thailand to speak to like about 600 university students during exam period on how to de-stress so this is useful anytime it's just not for covid but i think we just need to bring in a little bit more awareness at this time because it is unprecedented everyone agrees Now I also work with high school students on how to prepare them for university. So all the tools that I'm sharing with you right now works really well. Now, because the last professor mentioned that we need to move our limbs, and the more we move our limbs, the more bring muscles that we work out, right? So I'm going to talk about those a little bit later on as well. But first of all, let's start taking care of you. I know you all been sitting down a little bit. Can we do a little bit of just movement? Like if you could just shake your your hands with me. As the way I'm doing, okay. Move your wrists. Yeah, very good. And do smile, please. 
Excellent. Um, I do have 45 minutes with you. <laughs> I waited for over an hour. So I better have that 45 minutes. Very good. Okay, good. Now, if you could just lift your shoulders towards your ears and then drop. <sighs> lift more. Because <sighs> we've been sitting a little bit. So let's just lift up. <sighs> good. Now, if you could just sit on the edge of your chairs and make sure your feet are planted on the floor. If you could do that, please. And go ahead and close your eyes for me. Chest is open. Pull your navel towards your, the back of your spine and extend. Place your hands, both of them, on top of your lap with your hands facing the sky. Good. And just close your eyes. This is a de-stressing technique where you could just ground yourself, connect your feet to Mother Earth, and allow her to take all your worries away. I want you to shift your focus to the tip of your nose. And all I want you to do for the next minute is to listen to your breath. Whether it's short, it's brief, however it is, make a mental note of it. Just be thankful. This helps us slow down. And when we're very busy running around doing, you know, exams or online studying these days, and there's a packed schedule, sometimes we just forget. We need to take time for ourselves. We need to take a break from everything else. And just breathe, as simple as that. Ah, now when you're ready, you can slowly open your eyes. Good, now throughout the session, please keep breathing, okay? Now the moderator mentioned that this is actually about stress and anxiety and immunity. By understanding our stress, we understand the relationship with immunity. As you know that the more you stress, the more anxiety you have, the more negative emotions that we have, it is going to severely impact our immunity. But the more positive we stay, the better health we are at. And you know that. Like when you go through stress periods, um, exam periods especially, or if you're going through competitions, our body, our mind, our spirit, everything goes through a lot of stress, right? So it is very important for us to keep our immunity and our stress level minimal and our immunity up there. Okay, so you could do a le little check in there. I want to see, um, okay, so when we're stressed, we tend to get more colds. We don't sleep as well, right? We get aches and pains. So our body tells us because the mind and body talk to each other. Now, let me know this, right? How are you doing? If you could just take some notes because I'd like you to leave some questions in the chat box because I'm going to leave some time for us to do a little bit of uh, Q&A at the end. If you could just write, take some notes here. How are you doing? What are your emotions like? Are you frustrated? Are you stressed? Are you out of breath, which you could have, you know, sensed when you were doing the breathing exercise or grounding exercise just now? Are you overworked? Are you overwhelmed? Do you get temperamental? Like you lose your temper all of a sudden? Are you confused? Are you lost? Are you somehow feeling guilty that you're not doing good enough during this time of the pandemic? Take, them, take some notes there, okay? I need, really need us to understand what level we're at and what stress level we're at and how that affects our immunity and overall health, okay? All right. So what triggers us? You know, what bothers us is right now there's a lot of reporting. There's a lot of fear mongering. So we are affected. Our stress is caused by outside noises, the media, words, images, um, you know, uh, opinion, what is what what bothers us and what create all this stress? It's really important for you to understand that. In Hong Kong, I'm getting a lot of information like online learning. Parents are getting stressed about how to manage the kids. And it's really difficult because Hong Kong and a lot of people live in very small spaces. Working from home, those are all like, you know, factors can be, can be creating anxiety right now. 
and uncertainty. We don't know what's going to happen next. And there's constant change. Like, for example, I know in, in India, you guys have lockdown. And in Bangladesh, I have clients there. They've gone through lockdown. And all of a sudden, some people have gone back to work. And that's also a stress in itself because all of a sudden you're worried about maybe I could catch the virus or I had cases uh, um you know, clients where they actually had, you know, uh, had COVID and they recovered and they're worried about, you know, passing it to someone else and, you know, feeling blamed. So think about those things. Okay. I want you to take notes. Now, outside noises, we create inside frustration. Okay. What we call the monkey mind. Write down that, that term, the monkey mind. All that means is we overthink, we become reactive, we become frustrated and we become agitated. And we're just, the mind is like nonstop chattering. Imagine what is that doing to your body. So when our mind is negative, guys, our body gets all the stress. And when our, whatever our mind communicates, it's telling ourselves the same things. So our cells suffer. And this is how we get sick. And this is how our immunity goes down. Now, so back to the question is what rattles us or stresses us. I gave you some um, hints there, right? So you can start writing down. Number one, fear right now, right? Everyone is fearful of what getting sick, getting the virus, spreading it, or fearful of finances. There's so many reasons that our entire life has been rattled, okay? It, we never lived through times like this. I've never through lived times like this. I went to cover a war and never lived through a time like this. So think about it, okay? What are we worried about? Same thing. Okay, we'll worry about uncertainty. We'll worry about not getting next paycheck. We'll worry about our companies firing us and you're a student or a professor. You worry about when is, are we going to go back online? Are we going to go back on campus? When is the next competition? So there's a lot of uncertainty around that. If you could just build on this list, okay? I want to give you notes to think about. So the reason I'm here today, the reason I'm everywhere else is also helping people get into a positive mindset. Now, let me give you a little exercise here. Could you take your fingers, yeah, and do a tapping around your, your forehead, your brain area, and then the back. And, you know, you could tap just about anywhere. This is called EFT or tapping in traditional Chinese medicine. All that means is that it will help you erase or eliminate negativity and it erases any tensions, okay, reduces any tensions that you build up from overthinking. So this is another tool and you could tap like this as well, okay, like take your, take your palm and you could tap. Please do this as you're listening to me because I like to hear some feedback at the end how you're doing and how my session is helping you, okay. Usually I get to talk to you when I'm doing this but it's a little different session today so tap you know you could do your neck and you know we're on the computer a lot all the time just like me I mean I get upper back pain neck pain and deep shoulder pain so I did a lot of stretching and yoga before I came on today and you know took good care of myself and all that so I'm giving a lot of ideas on how you could keep your mind more positive the main thing is we do need to de-stress and of course when you get to the level where you could really kind of block out stress, we call it, is not to allow us to create stress. So that's what we're learning here today, okay? Now, I'm gonna give you this video, but if you could just, I just wanna give you a little demo. If you could take your two fingers, it's a laughter yoga where we could use sound to de-stress, to stay positive and reduce tension. But at the same time, we're moving, right? So you could watch the video and do it, but you're gonna take your two fingers and grab your opposite earlobes and then you're going to squat. So I'm not going to show you, but you're going to squat. And then when you go, go come up, you're going to laugh. Ha, 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 ha. You're going to squat. And then you're going to come up and ha, 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 ha. Okay? Got it. I hope you could hear the sound. It should be okay. There you go. Is the sound okay? There you go. Yay. Please laugh. Ha 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 ha. These are the teachers. Ha 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 ha. Very good. So guys, you could practice or you could go onto YouTube or Whatever website you could get, get your hands on similar 
videos. Now, the idea is to keep ourselves at ease and peace. When we're at ease, our body is at peace. Therefore, we don't have disease, right? Now, remember when the body is not well, what happens? Our immunity goes down. So the idea here is to keep our immunity up. And we want to be happy. Look at this yogini, right? She's happy and all that. So why laughter yoga? Again, because it has sound. It has movement. Now, you should be practicing this about, I think it was 14 times a day. Okay, that was one of my re references that when I did my research. Now, this exercise is well known, obviously established, um, founded in India, but it's got about over a thousand chapters around the world. And this is scientifically proven for students and adults. Okay, it gives you better clarity, gives you better focus, and obviously releases tension. So when you release tension, you could think better. So as students and professionals, it works for all of us, right? So I show this uh, to all my audiences, like everywhere I speak, and they love it because we need to laugh together. Now, when you're laughing, what happens? Remember I talk about communicating with the body? When we're laughing, we're sending happiness to the mind and the body. And when we do that, the cell is actually happy. So imagine when you're all stressed up like this, when you're doing exams or trying to study or an online, what's happening to your body? it's creating more stress and anxiety, and therefore it could be affecting our immune system. So we want to be relaxed. And that's why at the beginning, I started with this grounding exercise with you, breathing. Okay, write down your tools. So you're getting a, a holistic toolbox today. Okay, so make sure you do that. So the whole idea is to be at ease and peace. Now I have another question for you. You're a conscious individual. How would you like to be? What values could you bring across the table? Or if you walk into a room, or if you walk into your home, what values will you bring? Now, I'm showing you how to be centered, how to be positive. How would you add on to that list? Now, again, if you could have that at the end, we could discuss it a little bit, okay? So you could build on the list based on the, some of the tips that I'm giving you, yes? Good. So you're getting some tools, right? Now, so we got breath, we got sound, we got a little bit of movement. We're going to talk about food and nutrition. Now, I have lots of Indian friends, and I've been to Singapore, and some of you are from the Philippines. I know that. I've been to the Philippines as well. Very well-traveled, um, so quite a bit of a foodie. And I specialize in vegetarian and vegan nutrition. I love Indian food because my friends do that uh, with me all the time. Now, why is food so important? I know many of your athletes, but I also know many of you are athletes who don't eat well. <laughs> so it's really important that we touch into this topic. Now, if you, if you think about food as energy, what happens then, you know, if you're not sleeping well and if you're, uh, you know, constantly stressed um, and then if you are overthinking, you're stressing your body and if you're eating the wrong foods, that also stresses your body. And so that's going to bring your immune system, down, immune system down, okay? So what should what should you be looking at? Okay, plant-based foods. I know many of you could be vegetarian. How about natural and whole foods? Because some of you may be eating convenient foods, right? Deep fried foods. All that is going to impact your system. Processed foods, artificial foods, preserved foods. All that's going to affect our immunity. And our body loves plant-based, natural, whole foods, okay? Now, very important at this time, if you could write this down, especially for our immune systems, you need omega-3. Fish oils, B-complex, especially if you're vegetarian, you need B, you know, your B6, your B12, all that in there, okay? Vitamin B3 is good for everyone. If you have a chance to get out to the sun or stand by the window, absorb some sun. That is your best vitamin D, okay? Vitamin E. Magnesium is very important. Selenium is very important at this time. Um, alkaline foods, what are alkaline foods? Everything on the left side I said, plant-based foods, natural foods, all those are more alkaline foods. If you're eating junk food, all that is acidic and that causes disease in the body and that dreads your immune system down, okay? Very important to have anti-inflammatory foods. Pro probiotics are very important for digestion. Now, what causes bad digestion? Stress, anxiety, because the gut is known as the second brain. So when the brain is overthinking what's happening to our gut, it's telling it something. So if you feel your stomach, it may be quite tight. Okay, guys? If you feel your stomach, it may be quite tight because of stress. So focus on that. Now, if you could get your hands on like things like avocado, kale, 
blueberries, all the different kinds of berries and salmon on this picture. Superfoods are wonderful. Okay, make sure you have good fats in your diet. Now, chew slowly. That's also very important when it comes to conscious eating. What happens when you're choosing very fast, chewing very fast? You're stressed and you're creating stress in your digestive system because you're not chewing your food properly. Make sure you chew around your mouth because chewing slowly increases digestion and many people may not know this, but digestion begins in the mouth because we could only digest our food with saliva, right? So remember to chew slowly. Now, interesting enough, I was talking to some journalists uh, maybe two weekends ago and one of the ladies brought up the question that she says, how could I chew slower? So you could practice, right? Tonight, you're gonna have dinner, I'm assuming, because you're already past your lunchtime. If you could just take maybe um, a, a scoop of basmati rice, for example, or whatever bread or naan you're gonna be chewing on, if you could just chew it maybe 20 times slowly, and then increase 30 times, and then 40 times. Now you would watch your brain slowing down. Now, when our brain or thinking slows down, that's all going. That's also going to, uh, you know, de-stress us. Okay, if that makes sense. Very good there. Oops. Before I do that, I want to explain. Um, so take some notes there, and again, ask me about food and stuff. Right. In the next video, I want to do to give you a very simple recipe where you could eat for breakfast, lunch, snack, dinner, anytime. And I promise you, you could make it. It's very, very simple. Okay, you're gonna watch the video, but if you don't mind, as you watch the video, you could just do some movement because there's music, right? I want you to do some music. Is that okay? So do that. All right, let's do. Dun 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 dun. Write down the ingredients. Whoo! So you could eat. Dun 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 dun. Dun, 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 dun. Who repeat? Dun, 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 dun. You should dance. Tap your feet. Move your body. Don't sit all day long. Woo! Ooh la la. Woo! Dun dun. Dun dun. Dun 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 Woo! Did you like that? I hope you did. Write some notes for me. <laughs> okay. All right. So write some notes down. Going back to two slides there a more okay good why did i present to you that because what i talk about nutrition and food in this recipe what do you have you have a good bread very nice bread banana brazil nuts pine nuts and those are good fats and then you have a bit of honey and cinnamon now you could alter this recipe okay my teacher taught me this and i altered it this was a recipe that I created for a um, newspaper here that interviewed me for corporate professionals who are very busy. So they wanted some food that they could just assemble. So I was saying to you earlier, this is an anytime recipe. Guys, I know when school starts or when you start teaching again, you're going to be busy running around. So it would be a good idea for you to pack some good snacks like this with some good fat. Why am I emphasizing on good fat? Because good fat, remember how, um, how many of you know what the brain is made up of? At least 70% fat, right? So I'm sure in your, you know, in your own cultural foods, there's a way of saying, okay, maybe we, we could do, you know, just uh, have a certain kind of food like walnuts, right? Uh, olive oils, nuts, almonds, omega-3s, fish oils are good for nurturing the brain. But if someone is vegetarian, I have to give them these options, right? So the recipe is very good for that. And it's also very easy to make. You don't have to cook it. If you prefer, you could toast, of course, but you don't have to do that. Just very easy. If you want to start healthy eating or eating healthily, you know, choose like a wheat bread or something, but if you could get your hands on a gluten vegan bread, you could do that. But it's up to you because everybody is different, right? So that is why it's really important that we eat more good fats in our diet 
Um, I know in India we got ghee, which is anti-inflammatory. Um, you get, I know you could get your hands on ham oils and all that as well. And those are great. You could add some hemp seeds, pumpkin seeds, uh, you know, a lot of good seeds and nuts, right? Coconut oil is also a good fat. You could, I'm sure you put that in, you know, I, I like to put that in my basmati rice. And today I make some chickpea pancakes and I made that. Um, I'm 99% vegetarian. So, um, you know, I created a lot of recipes for myself. Okay, so think about that. I want to bring you back to one more time to show you the food um, you know, to the food supply. Um, I just want you to remember this, okay? So eating well is very important. Chewing slowly is very important. And choosing the right foods that are good for our energy is going to boost our immune system, okay? And I also gave you some supplements that are good for boosting our, our immune system, like your, your B complex 100 is very important right now because a lot of us are overthinking. So that is, that is very essential. So you could get your hands on some omegas and some B complex to start with if you haven't, right? And get the get some sun if you can. Okay, good. All right, we've done that, and we'll keep adding to the holistic toolbox. What else can you do? All we're talking about here today is, in fact, rooting ourselves. You know, inside our heart, what do we have? Strength, trust, confidence, love, respect, faith. But I really want to talk about gratitude. What is one thing that you have been learning in the last couple of months during the pandemic or during lockdown that you would not take away when this is all over? And I'm hoping it will be over now. <laughs> it will be over now and all of us will be smiling, right? Uh, but we could still smile. It doesn't matter what's happening outside. It doesn't matter if it's pouring or raining, it's storming. We could still smile. This is what I'm trying to teach here. What we're trying to share here is when we have these tools to take care of ourselves, to ground ourselves, we can do a lot of things. Why gratitude? Because according to spiritual practice or spiritual teaching, gratitude is the highest vibration of our emotions. When we are in deep, deep gratitude, it overshadows everything else. You know, it doesn't matter. Like I said, it doesn't matter if it's storming. It doesn't matter if there's a hurricane, you know. And I know when we're younger and even when my younger days, I'm like everywhere, you know. But it's important right now we ground ourselves. And that's why I started with the session with your feet planted on the ground. And I hope you're still doing that. And remember, I asked you to pull your navel in, to draw your navel in and extend your spine and open your chest. All this is important, guys, because when we're slouching, what are we doing? We're, you know, we're hiding, you know, we're, we're, you know, locking our emotions in and we're not allowing ourselves to re be positive. But when we're open, how does that look like? The image is completely different, right? And look at this visual I chose for you. I know as a girl, because I chose this for some of my teenage girls workshop, but all of you visualize you as a guy in here. Look at the roots, how strong that is. And then how strong the leaves are in the tree. And then look at her body, the way she's standing. She's erect. Think about it this way. If you are strong in your core, you're not going to be blown like this, right? And your emotions are going to be steady. And what happens when your emotions are steady? Your immunity system is good and you won't get sick. And you don't have to worry about getting sick. And that minuses your fear and your worry and your anxiety. And you're going to be up and running with lots of energy. Because remember when we're worrying here in the, in the head, okay, it's, gonna, it's really going to deplete our energy and it's going to really deplete our physical strength. And you don't want that because many of you work out, right? I do. I do yoga. Like today I did two hours of yoga. I went for a walk, a nature walk. And, you know, after this session, I'm going to do more stuff to take care of my body and myself. And you guys going to do that. And you want all that energy so that you could be productive and you could be vital. Guys, it doesn't matter if there's a virus out there. We're just going to be strong. And that's what I'm trying to get at. Okay, so root yourselves. So just imagine if you could root yourselves. Okay. Oh, speaking of that, could you do this? Why? Because you've been sitting a lot. Can you just kind of like wet your fingers? Yeah. And stretch your feet as well. Okay. So we need to get some circulation going. I think we're really good on time. Yeah. Very good. Teresa's doing a really good job. <laughs> Talking to the computer. Very good. Stretch this, okay? And remember you did this early. Shake out your stress. 
we store a lot of stress in the arms and the fingers and especially when we're connecting with IT we take in that vibration it's also negative as well and we don't want that in our body okay so shake it out shake it out shake it out and we meditate right so earlier you were meditating you were meditating now it's positive mindset remember if we vibrate or focus on fear what happens it's a law of attraction we're going to multiply more fear but if we focus on love and gratitude we're going to get more love and gratitude now if we we what i want you to write down here is plant the seeds of joy you know we want to be happy even when there's a disaster going on we want to be joyful it doesn't matter you know we want to have a very positive perspective on life makes sense right some of you are taking notes i hope and then you're you know maybe typing some question there so it's a mindset you know if you have a little thing about oh, you know i'm i'm scared i'm going to get the virus i'm scared that i'm going to get sick what can you focus on instead i am positive i am healthy you know i'm well i am safe i am protected you could say that you know you could just switch your mind okay so te little techniques there and believe me it works because in the last four and a half years i went through a very very deep transformation i had to learn all, relearn all this stuff not that i don't know i've been a yoga student since 2001 so i'm way up there you know <laughs> i've been learning tons of stuff and you know i'm old enough to have gone through a lot of life experiences that could have easily uh really down me you know so i had to learn all this stuff as well so i hope you could practice that and i know some of you are still young <laughs> in university and going through things but you're going to go through experiences in life where you will find today's talk very useful so positive mindset makes a difference okay so make a switch whenever you have a negative thought like for example oh i'm tired fine great say it i'm tired but don't keep saying it don't let it spiral out of control where your body is constantly hearing that it's tired it's tired and then you go uh okay but instead of saying you know what I'm tired, I'm going to rest, I'm recovered, and I'm all positive, I'm all energetic, I'm ready to go. See, you immediately you also hear in your sound, in your voice it changes, right? Good. What we're establishing here is also a lot of that is remember everything begins with me. Okay? We started by taking care of you. I've been teaching you all the tools that you could use to take care of yourself. I inspire you to go on, you know, the internet to search for your own tools. Like I meditate with Sri Sri Ravi Shankar every day now. Sometimes 3 times a day. It works for me, but you could choose your own teacher. You could call on me and we could meditate together, okay? Cuz I'm a life coach and everything else in between, right? Very importantly, guys, whatever you're doing, whether you're busy online, whether, you know, learning, teaching, or whether you're busy running this webinar today, if you could please take time for you me time okay in english we call it me time you need to pause you need to do quiet time you need to reflect what's going on in your life and quotation we call smell the roses means do nothing do nothing and just enjoy life okay if you're going through emotions if you have a lot of stress and anxiety you're overwhelmed you're depressed it's fine you're being human just be human but speak up call on me okay going to the shower shout scream sing whatever dance it off whatever punch literally don't punch anyone but you know imagine if you could just punch someone the idea is to let it out release the stress okay now another technique that you could do is if you're the type like if you're an introvert and you don't feel like speaking to anyone you find it difficult to express yourself you could do write and burn write out all your negative emotions write it all out and just burn it It feels so good. It feels so good. Trust me, I tried it. Now, my way of doing it is sometimes I just call my friends and I just talk. And we talk. We talk, we listen, we take turns, we talk, we listen. And that's called reaching out, guys. Like you may have a buddy at university, uh professors, you may have a a colleague that you you could just really trust and go, "Look, can I have a chat?" You know, that's okay. And if you need a mentor or coach, someone like me, great. Do it. There's tons of them in India. I could give you referrals. Support group. very important if you have a buddy system uh athletics together what kind of club i'm sure you guys have those but don't hide remember i talk about this don't hide really 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 speak up and you know because when you hold everything inside it's only going to make you sick but more importantly is to really 
give yourself time. Like if you have to do a mask like these guys are doing, put a cucumber on your eyes, do it. I do it. I use coconut oil to massage my face last night before I went to bed. I do a lot of yoga every day. I eat good food every day. And, you know, I take a lot of time for me. And it's, of course, it's easier for, for me to say because I live by myself and that's so much easier. And I understand that if you're living in a small household and, and you got big families in Asia, it's difficult, but you need to learn to how to create your own space as well. But, you know, sometimes it's okay to say, could I just use this room and let me have it for two hours and let me just have a quiet time. You know, like it's totally okay. Please do that. Okay. Almost done. Wow. Now remember this. We are in charge of how we feel. We have options. You could be the light or you could be the darkness. But I'm sure all of you love yourself. And this is why you're listening to this webinar the entire day today. And all the professors taught you how to, you know, talk about movement and exercise and muscle and all that. I'm teaching you lifestyle. So it comes all together. You know, we, we can't just do the physical stuff. We need to cleanse our mind. We need to cleanse our bodies and we need to clean our teeth. You know, we need to clean our thinking. We need to eat our good foods and make sure our immune system is strong. So positivity is the, really the only way. And love is the only way. Gratitude is the only way. So we have those choices in terms of how we can be. And when we are like that, we could emanate or spread the same to the people around us. Now, if you're still listening, I hope all the 300 of you stay on. I'm going to give you a visualization exercise. Okay, so if you could just sit on the edge of your chairs with your feet planted on the ground. Yeah. And then you're going to remember, have your hands over your lap. Your navel is drawn in. Your chest is open. Your spine is straight. And your head is level, so it's not looking up or down. So now you're very relaxed. Close your eyes. Now go back to, you know, remember, go back to your breath. Right. Tasting your breath. <sighs> listening to it and let's take an inhale and let's exhale sigh through the mouth <sighs> inhale again <sighs> sigh through the mouth inhale <sighs> sigh through the mouth and keep your eyes closed and just listen to my voice if you can i want you to put your hands over your heart and I want you to mentally make a list of things that you are grateful for. So make a gratitude list. It could be to start with, I am positive. I am grateful that I am positive. I am grateful that I am healthy. I am grateful that I am strong. I am grateful that I'm alive. I am grateful that I am safe. I am grateful that I am protected. So you can mentally build on that list. Good, now keep on building that list. I want you to imagine a ball of white light protecting you, surrounding you, safeguarding you. Really, really, feeling safe and confident and healthy. Now visualize a ball of golden light coating you, giving you double protection. Still doing your gratitude list, that's okay. Just visualize all of that. You're protected, you're safe. Now I want you to visualize some roots connecting down your legs down to your knees, your calves, your ankles, your feet, your toes. And the roots are like stretching down to Mother Earth, six feet under you, under your toes, under your feet. Visualize all of that. Now hold on to your gratitude list. I want you to imagine a dark cloud over your head or in your forehead or wherever that is. Gather all your negative thoughts all your worries and all your anxiety, whatever that is negative, that's dark, that you do not want. Ready? I want you to take that cloud and move it down your body. Move it down your face, your neck, your chest, 
your stomach, your digestive system, your hips, your legs, your knees, your calves, your ankles, your feet, your toes, and dump it all down through the roots and leave that dark cloud of negative thoughts to Mother Nature. Leave it all to her. She's here to take care of us. She can handle it. Leave it all to her and mentally tell her thank you. <sighs> now still feeling safe and light and protected in the white ball of light and the golden ball of light. Go back to your gratitude list. We want you to take a deep inhale. And on your exhale, I want you to just slightly press that list down your heart and lock it in for all that you are grateful for. Just to feel how wonderful that feeling is to be light, to be full of love and gratitude. Still now feeling strong and protected, full of love and gratitude. When you're ready, you can slowly open your eyes. Okay, moderator, I'm done. <laughs> How's everyone feeling? Good. I could stop sharing, yeah. Can any questions for me? We still have a bit of time, right? Good. Some sharing, some discussion. How's everyone feeling? I mean, it was a very interesting session. Very I'm sorry? Yes, good, good. How about you, moderator? Very, very useful, very, very informative. And then you took the session so interesting, your actions and then your body language and then your expressions and the sound, the hymns, whatever you're given, it was very, very interesting. Very it was good. like a TV channel for the past uh, 45 minutes. Hello. Like a Lotus, yeah. Lotus Life TV channel, like ah. where I created this uh, WebEx forum. And very it was very, very interesting and everybody was inspired and uh, Comments in the chat box was also very, very, what to say, it's so nice to see the comments in the uh, chat box. Very good. In your presentations, ma'am, we are very much happy to have you. And then uh, to make the session more interesting, I request the participants to post your questions in the chat box. So that I will read okay. the questions to madam and then I will, madam will be responding to the questions. Okay, tell me now. Good. I good, request good. all the participants to post your questions in the chat box. Please yes. don't switch on the audio. And please don't switch on the video. <laughs> it's restricted. Kindly post your questions in the chat box. I'm waiting wow. for the questions. Good. They're coming through. I'm seeing some. I, yeah. Very... Ma'am also likes interaction. Oh. I came to know. I came to know. So yes. that's the reason <laughs> I request the participants to post your questions in the chat box immediately. Yes. Thank you. So if you're interested, please post your questions. I'm waiting for your questions. <laughs> ask a question or say something how do you feel okay good people are happy very good nice presentation good how to overcome anxiety okay can we get that okay yes, I mean, you can so, see the questions in the chat box yes yes i saw one so this one that says how to overcome anxiety remember anxiety, said, yeah, yeah how to overcome the anxiety yeah. remember some of this right and you could do your breath work so close your eyes and just listen to your breath with your feet on the floor, that's it. Do some yoga, that's another way. Go running, you know, go, go, go walk in nature, which is what I do every morning, every night. I do at, at least one nature walk in the morning and then one at night. So that's me, but you need to find something that works for you, okay? Um, talk, do less computer, that's another way. Uh, worry less, that's another way. Remember you switch your thinking. As soon as you worry, you go, instead of worrying, let me think positive. Instead of thinking about the gray cloud, let me look at the blue sky, right? You just switch it. No monkey mind, okay? Monkey mind is only going to create more stress, okay? Some of those tools. Eat better food. <laughs> so you could eat more plant-based or vegetarian foods. Less carbohydrates and processed foods, okay? That's another way, all right? Good. Tell me more. more there are many participants there commenting in the chat box. Your session was so relaxful. Yes. You got relaxed from the session. That's what I want sending to Sending loads of love to the Hong Kong. They are sending loads of yes. love to Hong Kong. Yes. So Lots really, participants, it's amazing response I'm getting oh. in the chat boxes. Oh, Even yeah. I am feeling like what to say. 
<laughs> goosebumps goosebumps in me oh very good seriously very good. lot of uh, good uh, comments and then good reviews and then many people have uh, forgotten their mental stress and then they are uh, focused on your session and it was very interesting good so thank you so much ma'am thank you so much anything else you want to share with the participants yes let's do one more because everyone's feeling so happy someone had a question about something best ex exercise for yes, i do my have one question about the meditation yes. this is a uh -huh. uh, from kanpur university yes hi tell me yes I please ask your questions yeah the professor we are running out of time we are running out of time please ask your questions okay he had a question Or about please put it in the chat box yeah meditation yes ma'am yes ma'am what what is the basic concept of meditation and uh, implementation of in students um so shri shri ravi shankar says meditation happens when you come <laughs> so the basis of meditation is to me is just shutting my eyes and focusing inward and block out all the outside noises remember in my present presentation i talk about outside noises and that distracts us you know that causes a lot of tension and stress it could so what i do is i just sit and ground put my feet on the floor and ground that's meditation you know and everyone defines it a little differently and you could find your own method of meditation remember i told you to go on youtube or internet or you know go find a teacher that works for you everyone is different okay so i i found my way to meditation i never used to meditate two three times a day now i do because it really works for me and i have different methods i learn from different teachers okay but the basis is to ground to be quiet okay so we don't get the monkey mind going yeah okay good Okay. Thank you, ma'am. Uh, as we are running out of time, right now okay. I am I am planning to stop the questions. Thank you so hello. much, ma'am. And then uh, it was a wonderful session. Participants, Some, hello. Video and audio. We are running out of time. Yeah. And then uh, next speaker has arrived, and then we have to go ahead with the next session. Speaker. Thank, thank you, ma'am. Thank you so much, ma'am. Thank you so much, ma'am. Thank, thank you so you. much. Namaste. Lots of love from India to Hong Kong. Namaste. Ma'am, and then in the future also we will be inviting you. You have to take part in all our initiatives, and then Tamil Nadu Dr. Ambedkar Law University Department of Physical Education and Sports will be hosting you in all the future events also. We will be inviting you for sure. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you so much. You must pay a visit to our T N D L U once to India. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Next, I invite our next speaker, Dr. C. Ilai Raja Sir, Assistant Professor, School of Excellence in Law, Tamil Nadu, Dr. Ambedkar Law University. I welcome my mentor, Dr. Ilai Raja Sir, and uh, he was a great guider in my life. And I welcome him. Sir will be addressing on topics sports, ethics, and law. Sir will be addressing on topics sports, ethics, and law. And uh, Sir's profile, Sir has done his. He is an alumni of Tamil Nadu, Dr. Ambedkar Law University. And uh, sir has done his MPhil at Jawaharlal Nehru University, India's prestigious university, JNU at New Delhi. And sir has done his PhD at TNDALU. And sir is now assistant professor at School of Excellence in Law. And sir has been specialized in international law, and he's an expert in international law. Now I welcome my mentor, Dr. C. Lera Das, sir, assistant professor, School of Excellence in Law, TNDALU, to address on the topic sports ethics and law. Welcome you, sir. Welcome, Mark Castro. Thank you. Good afternoon to all. Let me put my uh, PowerPoint. Just a minute, ma. Let me go to other applications. Now, as Teresa Ma'am said, I'm not good at the PowerPoint. So it is getting shared. Yes, yes, yes. 
it is getting shared. Okay. Yes, it is getting shared. Yes, yes. Let 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 me do that. Just a minute. Is that visible? Okay, sir. It is not visible. It is, it is getting shared, but it is not visible on the screen. Is it visible now? No, sir. No, no, no. It's not visible. Is it not visible? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. It is not visible. Once again, you share it, sir. Yes, ma'am. I'll try. Is it visible? Yes, sir. It is visible, sir. Yes, it is very clear. Yes, ma. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you, ma. Thanks for all the participants for adjusting the time. Now, yes. See, we have heard a lot of experts and myself, Dr. Raja. It's an honor to present this topic among a lot of sports fraternity. The sports life, sports life and sports ethics basically is part of human nature. And you can see the slide. I have mentioned a lot of virtues, compassion, discipline, spirituality, respect for fellow human beings, selflessness. All these things may identify a pious person, but now indeed you see a sports person exhibiting all these aspects. So sports ethics is in term a way of life. You see, so many sports persons have this, uh, you know, compassion. They have been uh, donors. They have been uh, demonstrating spirituality. You know, people respect, you know, others. Even after the retirement, they have contributed so much. So now you see this light, the sports ethics, the human virtues of excellence, hard work, humility, patience, and sports persons uh, convert their failures as success. And you see, uh, you know, uh, MS Dhoni creating opportunity in no situation. In football, you see David Beckham and uh, other examples. Now, when you know you have uh, you know people who have turned situations from failure to success. Now, once you know the audience see the slide, leadership, trusting human nature hard work, excellence, spirituality, selflessness, without these humans cannot progress. But in demonstration, the human uh, virtues have been excellently displayed by sports persons. Sports persons, though they represent a nation, they are loved by all because of their excellence, they are universal, they are a common heritage like the astronauts. Well, that is the uniqueness of sports ethics. So we have heard Teresa ma'am speaking about you know, maintaining harmony within the body. Now sports person maintain harmony within the body and also they share it to the others. And in fact, sports ethics are part of human way of life. Now that is why my first slide, you know, without all these uh, values, humans cannot survive on planet Earth. No. Anger management, you need patience and you need to work with fellow human beings. So interdependence is loss of nature. You have to be disciplined. From our part of the world, we have Sachin Tendulkar, you know, who has faced a lack number of balls to go for a perfectionist straight drive. So you see compassion. Many sports person are uh, involved in terms of, you know, charitable cause. Now, all these things denote that sports ethics is a way of life. So, let me move on to the next slide. I hope it is moving. If not, uh, start. Okay. Next slide, possibly. Yes. So, you have 
uh, you have uh, you know some examples which I have got for the audience. Though I represent the Department of Law as an ardent follower of sports, we have this some examples. Ayrton Senna, you know, a person who is a world champion, uh, F1 Formula Racing. Uh, very few people had an opportunity to exit the earth in what they are doing or what they love to do so. So Ayrton Senna, you see, you know, a seven times world champion, 80 times podium finish, uh, finish. Uh, you know, he died in a San Marino F1 racing at a very young age at 34. And Ayrton Senna is a role model for excellence, F1 uh, racing, Formula 1 racing. But before the crash, before three months, he spoke to his sister about a plan in creating a charitable endowment. And post death, even the day of death, there was an Austrian flag in this race car. And that was actually to solid, uh, provide solidarity to his friend's demise, who actually died again in a tragic uh, you know, car race. So that was uh, the heart and soul of sports persons to see that how come these sports persons have understood that beyond the sports, beyond their you know, self-pride, glory, fame, how these sports persons have come to a conclusion that their life must be a life of contribution. So post his death, his sister came with an endowment, you know, whatever royalties he earned, the Institute of Ayrton Senna, the first NGO uh, to be recognized by the UNESCO. Of course, a Brazilian national, you see the team, he has raised for Tolman, Lotus, Honda, McLaren and Renault. You know, he, after his demise, whatever he earned, there was a foundation which reached the life of millions per year, millions of children in Brazil. So you have this uh, famous quotation from Ayatan Senna. If you want to change something, we need to start with the children. And see now, what is all this to do with sports persons? Sports persons are known to represent their nation. Sports persons are recognized for their talent. Sports persons are identified in terms of entertainers. Sports persons are identified in terms of persons who maintain their physical fitness. But on the field, of the field, after the retirement, how sports persons think universal? Now, this is what, when we have a you know, seminar on sports ethics and the legacy of sports persons who are actually the human examples, you see that they have contributed and very few persons have the opportunity, though their eyes have closed, their eyes still vision the world by contributing. So one example is Ayatran Senna. Now let me go to another uh, example, a sports person, a renowned boxer. Again, you will see a Olympic gold medalist, Muhammad Ali, you know, uh, earlier Cassius Clay, a person who fought against uh, racial uh, you know, artificial racial prejudice or supremacy. He fought for the rights of fellow human beings. Now, he embraced Islam and Muhammad Ali, you know, till the end, he was supporting the cause in terms of human rights, respect for fellow humans. Now, again, you see this example, Muhammad Ali. What does it make a sports person? To be spiritual? To think about fellow human dignity? To understand international politics, to work for the cause of respect for fellow human beings, and when once he was uh, you know affected with Parkinson, he did not resign, and lifelong he focused on philanthropy and charity. And again, all these persons whom I am giving as examples are famous sports personalities who are role models, icons, but known for their humanity. Now you will see that, uh, you know, Muhammad Ali is sent up and he, he, it is running based on six core principles. One is confidence, confidence in oneself, conviction. Now you stand steadfast in what you do, dedication, committed to the cause, giving, be a giver, not be a receiver and uh, understand the plight of others, respect for fellow human beings, now, which is very important the bedrock of human life, universal brotherhood and universal sisterhood, 
and spirituality. And uh, Teresa, ma'am, with due respect, she said, spirituality is the most, uh, you know, refined uh, process of the spirituality, you know, confidence, trustworthiness in God ensures that you will live the life peacefully, a God-oriented life. Now, all these sports persons, one may not think sports persons are spiritual. One may not think sports persons as compassionate. You know, sports persons changing or touching the lives of billions of people. Now, this happened and these people have lived. So, this is a fantastic, uh, you know, example. Sports ethics are part of human nature. And with sports, we learn life lessons. Now, let me go to another example. Jackie Joyner Kirfi, a renowned athlete, considered to be, you know, what a by the world press, greatest female athlete of the 20th century. Again, she was a human rights activist and uh, men and women are equal and women play different roles. You have a Nadia Kumansi in a Mother Jones. You have Steffi Graf in tennis from our part of India. You have Piti Usha, you have uh, Sindhu. Uh, you have, uh, you know, so many women sports persons who have inspired the life of women, touching the life of so many women, inspiring them to achieve and contribute. So Jackie Joyner Kirsi, you know, most of the uh, sports persons whom I am citing, of course, there are millions of sports persons. They are not only icons, not only role models, they are mentors. And more importantly, they are, they are the opinion makers. So when we touch the part of sports ethics, which I am trying to articulate, you see human examples. Sports persons beyond the boundary or beyond the reach of their sports have uh, reformed the lives of millions. Now, that is the quality of a sports mind and what we call as a real celebration of sports life. Now, she is, uh, you know, with her husband, who has been the coach, a mentor for her, has uh, formed an Athletes for Hope organization. Now, let me go to another example. From Tamil Nadu, India, this part of the world, a person you know who was uh, you know who met with an accident, who lost his leg, but this perseverance, resilience, the human art can can ever rise. Failures can be transformed into success. So you have this uh, fantastic uh, sports person, a uh, human universal model, Maria Pan, uh, Maria Pan Tangavelu. So, Maria Pan Tangavelu, representing Tamil Nadu, a Rio Para Olympic gold medalist, and he has been awarded the highest award for sports in India, Arjuna Award, the Rajiv Gandhi Kel Ratna Award. The Rajiv Gandhi Kel Ratna Award is the highest award given to sports persons in India for a civilian from India who has contributed to Indian sports. Now, rising from a humble background, uh, at the early stage, uh, living with a single mother, and being a child labor and met with an accident, lost his leg, but human heart, human mind, human soul, in terms of sports, he not only developed a career, but he has promised hope for the millions. Now, again, this is, you know, these are all human examples. When we speak about COVID today, when we speak about sports as a pure entertainment, when we spoke about, when we, when we deal about sports as a fitness, or which can have a psychological relief to oneself. Now you see sports persons within them and outside them, they are the real true inspirations. So Maria Pan Tangavali, you know, a high jumper, and again, in terms of his own impairment, cho choosing, you know, a high jump. And again, a fellow human being who coached, you know, Maria Pan Tangavali, it speaks about individual social responsibility. And sports life is a way of life. Now let me go to the another, you know, legendary personality. This whole seminar, this whole seminar is a tribute to the Indian legend, the father of the Indian hockey, uh, father of Indian, uh, you know, national uh, sports, Major Dayan Chand. He was called as uh, Dayan Chand because he used to practice in the moonlight. His original name was Dayan Singh. The gold medalist representing India in the Berlin Olympics, Los Angeles, Moscow. Such a you know talented person. You see the history, 
and historians say that when india defeated uh, germany in the berlin olympics hitler wanted to have a look on his stick and hitler wanted to understand whether there was any glue on the stick such was the control and when we speak about pre independence contribution of indian sports persons india pakistan being united you have sports persons like ali dara you know it was a famous example for brotherhood and sisterhood in terms of uh, human you know human kind as a human family now you see major dayan chand uh, you know it seems from a humble background and serving india in the indian you know uniform service military service because of his sheer talent hard work commitment he rose to great heights and again he is a universal sports person uh, he is uh, you know birthday or he is celebrated as a national sports day august 29 the national stadium is named after him and till the last moment he was serving as the chief of the indian hockey uh, in uh, national institute of sports patiala and that is the spirit where the uh, the sports persons all over the world they have contributed extensively so all these examples now try to give us an idea to understand the term sports ethics and you see all these sports persons there are lakhs and lakhs of universal examples by patience by their sacrifice by their commitment their dedication uh, turning you know uh, failures into success team spirit you know forgiveness thanksgiving cheering others and beyond their life trying to contribute to the human society sports persons have given the definition in terms of human virtues so this is very important when we try to learn lessons of life so these sports personalities and if someone uh, you know uh, you know removing this seminar or without this seminar caption when someone is posting all these values someone may say it is a spiritual principle these principles are human values now you will see with this seminar when all these principles are implemented by sports persons now this, these are lessons of life and the sports persons their way of life you know enhances human life on earth so let me go to the last part of it the legal philosophy of sports now sports law as a person representing the department of law from the tamil nadu prambik law university sports law we have a lot of agreements anti doping laws regulated by wada world anti doping agency uh, anti doping agencies agreements we have olympic association a lot of rules are having you know it is uh, you know uh, circulated throughout the world so whether sports law is all about contract sports law is all about agreement whether it is all about regulation of money or you know this uh, uh, corporate life no you see in essence sports law you know in terms of philosophy the law which is based on laws of nature self realization of oneself you see every sport there is an umpire or there is a referee you will see some neutrality justness fairness equality these are the virtues of law these are the fundamental tenets of law which you will see rarely in certain uh, you know uh, fields of law uh, for instance you see that in public law constitutional law international law personal law and if you ask me the high threshold of values morals in law one can see in sports law you know, a philosophical approach now you see in sports law you know philosophy is all about self realization of oneself and sports operate through instinct it is an instinct based application this is the one subject where laws are triggered directly by humans based on heart soul body mind coordination so there is no other law apart from the laws which i gave as an example one is religious law god and the believer another is constitution another is international law only in these three laws you see a soulful approach with the law directly all other laws they have some related versions of the soul not the direct version of the soul but in, you see in terms of application of sports law respecting the law in sports while it is a game of volleyball or athletics or football or cricket or hockey or for that matter any other sports you find 
this law is operated by the soul and inertia from inside now this is very important sports law you know it teaches uh, how to balance happiness and sadness okay so the balancing of you know failures and success the human laws are based on happiness and sadness this will be like a pendulum and sports law teaches philosophically how to handle the reality of human life in terms of sadness or in terms of happiness so this is a very important virtue of sports law see all these laws i do not want to narrow down sports law into a dispute mechanism of course the due respects to arbitration or the agreements or the associations which have drafted so many rules and regulations the anti doping laws all these laws are there but philosophical from a human enquiry from a sensical perspective you, you want to put sports law under the microscopic table you will find justice fairness a soulful application and a law which teaches you to balance sadness and happiness in real life and if you see sports law this again a very rare law which is connected integrated with nature or earth so you see the swimming it is with water archery or athletics you have to have some understanding with the air wind flow and you you take a field sports it is attached with the land so now this law if you see philosophical from a human self realization point of view these laws speak about laws of nature sports laws are integrated with human and nature which cannot be bifurcated and lastly you know what actually sports law teaches i gave the examples of sports ethics not in abstract form but in terms of the lives of many uh, universal human examples the sports laws you know tries to teach humans the reality most of the sports persons retire at the age of 35 or 40 still they have one innings to play a lengthy period of life now you see they have realized that what is more important preservation of their body enjoying their sports giving back to their sports or understanding what is failure so every sports person once they realize failure and success they understood that sports life sports law sports as a sports mind or sports reasoning makes you a giver rather a receiver so that is where sports persons though there are some allegations there are exceptions abuse in terms of sports fraternity but generally sports persons what sports law teaches or what happens to a sports personality they realize themselves more than the other professionals so they end as givers and not as receiver so this is the realization of the self is considered to be the point of human saturnity it is a matter of truth and no doubt all the scriptures theology supports sports so now with this i will come to the conclusion of the presentation so what have i discussed sports ethics and sports law sports life is human life and sports life is human nature and it's an instinctive human nature but sports life benefits the self and the entire mankind now that has to be appreciated and i have given some examples today so let me go to the conclu conclusion or the concluding part it is a small quote sports represent intrinsic nature and values of human beings for every human since inception lived with sports and contributed to the welfare of all so let me thank all the participants my esteemed colleagues and uh, you know right. over right. the you now the present or the speakers with the excellent information with the expert backdrop they contributed and let me thank our honorable vice chancellor for giving me this opportunity my esteemed brother colleagues professor parmasivam professor asan professor raja sir and one of our beloved students who has been extending you know unconditional who has been extending all his talent all his potential this human service in terms of uh, you know serving as a moderator for our law university across time and space with the pure intention of facilitating all the uh, spokespersons or the presenters 
i thank uh, our student and my younger brother castro for his unstinting support and i wish me being a, you know a, a representative from the department of international law the tamil nadu dr ambedkar law university it's a privilege for our university to host this sports uh, webinar and all the audiences the participants the esteemed speakers throughout the world you now it is our salute to you and gratitude as uh, castro said we look forward to your expertise your contribution in the coming years thank you so much for this opportunity thank you so much it was a wonderful presentation and sir the 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 life life uh, history of uh, mohammad ali and then uh, mariyappan tangavelu and then the dhyan chand the, the way you have shared everything and the way you have compiled everything and the way you have interpreted the sports law and very nice sir. and the at the quotes and the quotes the lost quotes was so nice sir thank you so much sir for the wonderful presentation it was really enriching enriching session your session was and then lot of participants are appreciating your presentation and then the values you are perpetuating in every everybody is appreciating that in the chat box thank you, thank you so much sir thank you so much sir even thank i had enlightening session from your uh, your uh, lecture thank you so much sir thank you so much. now i invite now uh, we have, we have came to our valedictory session now i invite our chief guest for the valedictory session professor dr sheila stephen honorable vice chancellor of tamil nadu physical education and sports university melakottayoo chennai welcome you ma'am welcome you ma'am we are very much happy Thank to you have so much. you ma'am we are very we are very much happy to have you i mean in the midst of your busy schedule a whole day you had a hectic schedule and lot of commitments in the midst of your busy schedule thank you for accepting our invitation and coming to this international virtual seminar um, the law law the sports life the epics and law and the health thank you so much ma'am thank you so much yeah, for making you your presence with us and now i'll read your profile ma'am uh, uh I- Doctor, I think uh, not, uh, that may not be necessary. I can no, no, we have to read your name. profile. <laughs> Please, ma'am, it's a humble request. We have to read your profile. Uh, Doctor, Mrs. Sheila Stephen, PhD, Vice Chancellor of Tamil Nadu Physical Education and Sports University, Mela Kota, Chennai. Ma'am, service forty years of service in the field of physical education and sports. Principal eight years, VC one and a half years. Specialization: badminton, basketball, sports psychology, research and statistics, biomechanics. Special training, Springfield College for uh, Citizen Training, USA. Presented papers in London, USA, Sri Lanka, Malaysia, Kuwait, Taiwan, Germany, Thailand, and China. Represented university representation in ball badminton for three years. District representation in player basketball, badminton, cricket, badminton, and table tennis. National referee in player basketball. Seminars and workshop. Participated and presented eighty-five papers in national and international conferences, seminars, and workshops. Books, three books, ma'am has written. Research articles published one seventy five. Additional assignments as executive member, also as Asian Association of Sports Management, representing India. Syndicate member T N P E S U. NAC assessor U G C T R B. State and Central Academic Expert Committee member U G C bodies. Executive committee member twelve universities. Awards best principal award from A I A C H E. Uh, best paper presenter award China A A S M. Other national awards six, and ma'am's ma'am has achieved a lot in the field of sports. Uh, when she was a principal for eight years and VC as one of the peers, we welcome you, ma'am. We take immense pleasure. The Tamil Nadu Dr. Ambedkar Law University Department of Physical Education Sports take immense from you, and in the future also for lot of initiative for lot of other future programs, we will be inviting you as a guest, and we will want your support and guidance in all our directions and all our ways. Yeah. So I welcome you, ma'am, and I request you to deliver. I request you to deliver your valedictory address. Oh, thank you so much for the nice words of introduction. Uh, yeah, I would like to share the content. Yes, ma'am. Please share your content, ma'am. Please share your content. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. Uh, 
Yes, ma'am, it is clear. Yeah, I am right. Ready. Okay. Uh, it's a joy and a privilege uh, to be part of this program. I am really grateful to you. And I congratulate the entire team. And I thank the Vice Chancellor of Law University and the excellent team has been working very hard on this uh, particular uh, virtual seminar. And I could understand that a band of experts and a spectrum of uh, no, subjects has been discussed. I have been listening to the last two sessions. It was really good. I'm so happy. Um, uh, I know how uh, how could be the mental status of uh, the participants of the last the validatory program. So I'll uh, I just give a very brief end note, and um, I'll, I'll just go to the slide show. Before I could go for uh, uh, the validatory address, I will just highlight on the power of sport. Before understanding the physical issues of sports, we need to understand the power of sports. Nowadays, it's a buzzword, and it now it has reached the iconic status. Initially, sport only, sports was only for uh, fitness, and now it is for health. And now they say it is sports for life. That is your team. So now uh, the sports is making the individual to be a very powerful human capital. With all cap capabilities and values, and uh, you know, important. And uh, so many speakers might have uh, spoken on values. I'm not touching that. But anyhow, when you go to the field, it gives you an opportunity to draw the talent and uh, develop the talent and uh, deploy the talent. So, sports is a very, very strong single entity which helps you to draw the talent, develop the talent, and deploy the talent. This is why the top athletes, international athletes, are called the unofficial ambassadors of our country because they carry the values and they develop the talent and they participate and bring laurels to the country. So, how do we go about organizing ourselves in support? So, uh, dear audience, we need to self organize. Please do not expect everybody to motivate you or put you into programs and all that. You need to be self organized. And moreover, you have to be self-motivated, and there should be definitely a part of the exercise motivation in you. And now at the right side, I have given a very small diagram of physical activity um, a pyramid, which explains to you about the various activities you normally go into a day-to-day -day basis. The down part is the day-to-day -day activities. And the second pyramid, the second block talks about how important is sports for some uh, specific uh, reason, like you go for physical activities, maybe recreational activities, um, or for competitions, and there may be various reasons why we participate in sports. And at the higher one, you have you need to have some special hobbies, like per week you participate in one day or two days or something like that. And finally, you have to spend very limited time. At the top, you see very light, limited time for. Um, inactive participation of sports, okay? Uh, active participation and uh, passive participation, we call it that. At the top, spending time on technology, uh, TV, and all other things, we need to spend a little time. That's what it explains. Um, now, my next slide. So, how to push yourself? If an egg is broken by some inside force, like when? And if the egg is broken by an inside force, life begins. So that's how you need to pick it up. And you need to make your or build your own empire. No pain, no gain. Okay. So it is you to go ahead, get ready. And from the inside force, I want everybody to be active, participating in sporting activities. And as I told you before, it is a human capital. It's nothing but the having a stock of competencies, skills, ability, capability, and personal attributes, knowledge, skills, emotional intelligence, physical fitness. So once you develop all those things, they're all possible through sporting activity. This will put you as a very successful human being, as well as a powerful human capital in the country. So, so many people are talking about uh, sports ethics. I'm not going to touch on exactly the sports ethics. But I'll explain to you very briefly on the principles which we follow in sport activity. 
It's nothing but the principle, the basis, or the foundation. It forms the character, and that has been translated into action, that is behavior, and how you act into a situation. This is the next slide. Who is to follow the rules? Maybe uh, even uh, if you are an international athlete, you may be an NBA player, but still you are supposed to follow uh, the rules. A runner cannot violate. Uh, running beyond his lane, okay? He should be on the lane. Oh, this is a slide which I always like, so I put it, the boss is always right. That's the rule number one. And uh, rule number two, what is that? If the boss is wrong again, three, rule number one. So all the players, naturally, they will, they have to, you know, take on to the um, rules of uh, their sports and game. Here comes the ethical behavior among uh, the sports, uh, the coaches and other people on Maintaining their ethical behavior, expressing their emotions, has been very much reflected on through action. There are a uh, variety of coaches who have been, uh, you know, uh, talking to the players, handling them. So many are the hugging them, and they are showing the love and affection towards them. At the right side, you see they are boiling in anger because they might not have played, or they have done a very a grave uh, mistake while playing. So, but in all cases. We accept that there will be some emotional balance, even if you, when you play or when you talk or when you to be together. So coaches and athletes maintain a very good relationship, which has always been highlighted as ethical behavior. And this is about very, very unique. I like the slide, beyond different. No other entity other than sports you find that everybody is treated equally. The gender equity is there, and nobody asks for any reservation in any sport. Everybody can come in, and equity is there, and balancing of both gender equity is there, and inclusiveness. Even people who are not able to differently abled, they are also participating. Previous speaker was talking about uh, the differently abled person, Maria Pen. Like that, everybody has the opportunity to participate, and that is really explained as one of the ethical characteristics of sport. And here comes the role of um, a coach, a team manager, captain, or anybody, associations, or anybody, any entity as for, for that matter. Here, uh, there are three ways of you know, having leadership, autocratic, free reign, participatory. And there may be situations when you need to be so much autocratic as a captain or as a coach, or as a manager. And sometimes we can give them a free reign uh, when they have the leisure time activities and all that. And at the right side, it's mostly been accepted. It is the participative sport, participatory leadership, democracy. Okay. So this has also been practiced always in sports. The leaders take up different roles in sports as coach, team manager, and captain. These are all the basic um, uh, no, ideas of, you uh, know, uh, get ready with the leadership. And now, up, oh, um, I'm not able to move into the next one. Okay. Okay. Here you see a group of people participating in one single activity. Okay. That reflects so many good, ethical, valuable characteristics of. The participants. Maybe they are tolerant, they are very coordinated, they are very much uh, having a perfect understanding in doing this particular activity. The persons who are down below have, need to have de definitely a larger part of tolerance because they need to carry the entire group over them. Like that, the single one activity explains to us uh, how much cooperation is needed, the unity is needed, the mental focus is needed. The concentration which is needed in a particular activity. A similar one is like the group dynamic. Here they have they are expressing their collective experience, a very, very intensive interpersonal relationship. They're sharing the joy and they are overcoming the feeling of otherness. I know there may be different people with different qualities, characteristics, but when it comes for sport and when it has been for competition. Whether it is your uh, grief or joy, they carry together 
and they enjoy uh, being together. And this, I think you might have seen in so many um, like WhatsApp group, uh, how people are how people are so uh, so much generous. See, Abel is losing the race by guiding the other person to have the correct finishing line. The person who is running at the front, he has misjudged the finish line. Okay, so he never he thought he has finished, but the person who is coming at the back, him guiding him. Could have taken over and finished the race first, but he didn't do that. He's waiting for, he's showing the way for the other person, uh, the person telling him that you have not finished the race, the finish line is yet to come. So he's moving forward. This is one of the best qualities which are reflected in the voting arena, and uh, we need to understand all those things. Here we have a lovely uh, a sporting personality, uh, everybody knows about her, and she was having a challenging life because. Uh, the cultural ethics related with the culture and the religion was not uh, like no parallel. They were not able to coordinate well because uh, the people didn't allow her to go into sports. They thought the society has assigned a role to beget children and to that the role. But she has very boldly come forward and uh, overcoming the challenges. It was uh, replicated in her life also. She was a very successful woman. It gave her a very, very great um, confidence. So I'm coming to the end of my speech uh, to tell you about how important is your mind. Uh, Michael Jordan, it's Michael Jordan, and he says, young guys don't realize how much of the game is played in your head, okay? Uh, so as an N NBA player, so your mindset, um, your uh, focus towards sport, all based on your mind the gymnasium. And so many people might have talked on uh, sports law, and uh, I want to add one, only one point where we have the sports industry, which is dealing with sports facilities, sports equipment, and the sports costume and attire. And uh, in all cases, uh, the sports laws come into play. Uh, I, I, I need not explain much on sports law because you are all uh, from law university. And uh, uh, I, I would like to say that sports doesn't emerge just like that. Okay, that should be a third program. And there should be some human resources, all qualified people, like uh, like your physical director who is in the law university. And there should be definitely a sporting facility. And there should be sporting, social inclusiveness and talent identification. There should be financial funding and competition. So without this excellent structure outside, we will not be able to organize anything. And always have in your mind, sports people have to capture the needs of the differently abled. Uh, in abroad, in other countries, they are giving so much of importance to people. This is one of the uh, two few pictures which I brought. I'm not going to talk to you on uh, uh, the body weight and the nutrition. There's very, nothing very special about it. This is the energy balancing equation. Uh, at the top, you have the food intake, if, uh, calorie, okay? And uh, I don't know, know the, uh, leading to obesity, less activity, and uh, so less activity, that's why it's leading to obesity. And at the right side, uh, load is more, high activity, and less food intake, and it has gone to, it has led to loss of weight. So, and finally, technology also plays a, a vital role in sports. How you can uh, think about, uh, it may be sometimes a boon, or a bin. It's a very nice, interesting slide. The first person who is lying down says, everything these days in .com this, .net that, I just can't stand it anymore. And the person who is maybe his friend at the back, he says, I know a website that can help you. So again, he go back, goes back to technology. So uh, technology, though so it's interrelated and doing so much good to uh, sport, sometimes the technology also happens to be a, a bane. Uh, to uh, the sporting activity. And finally, I think about the human performance analysis industry. Uh, we are all in analysis industry four, and uh, now they are all the uh, sporting machine are digitally connected, and it will be able to analyze the human performance. So you could see around eight or nine machines which have been digitally connected, and in one shot, it will be able to analyze the entire movement of an uh, individual. Okay, so this is about the sports uh, technology 
and this is the final slide I wish to show. If there is a way, will there is a way, okay? Without any facility, without any equipment, without any even footwear, people are able to participate in sports. So this, uh, your facility, your uh, human resources cannot be an excuse in participating in sports. Finally, the best gift you offer to the world around you is your health. A bird sitting on a tree that is never afraid of the branch breaking because of the trust it has in its own wings. So once you are healthy, once you are fit, you can trust yourself and you can believe yourself and you need not depend upon the other uh, environment and so on and so forth. In these words, I thank you and thank everybody, the law university, the VEC and the team for giving me the opportunity to talk to you and give an end note. Thank you. God bless you. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, ma'am. Your words and wishes always mean a lot. And in behalf of the Department of uh, Sports, Physical Education of Tamil Nadu, Dr. Ambedkar Law University, mm -hmm. I sincerely thank you for the wonderful valedictory of this. Uh, ma'am, in the future also, we will be getting all your directions and guidance with okay. our future initiatives. We seek okay. your support always. So thank yeah. you so much, ma'am. In the schedule, thanks for consulting as a guest for the Valdic Prayer. Thank you so much, ma'am. Thank you so much. Thank, thank you very much. God bless you. Right. So, now we have came to the end of our uh, entire uh, international literal seminar on sports life, health, law, and ethics. So uh, after the vote of thanks, the feedback link will be posted in the chat box so the participants can uh, register in the feedback form for the uh, certificates. And then in the YouTube link, you know, those who are watching the YouTube live stream also, YouTube also it will be posted in the comment box. So now I will invite uh, the man behind this entire international virtual seminar, the uh, virtual seminar on life, health, law, and ethics. He was the man behind this entire event. And uh, this event was a vision of him. And I invite Dr. K. Paramasivam, sir, Assistant Director of Physical Education, Soil, Tamil Nadu, Dr. Ambedkar Law University, to deliver the vote of thanks. Good evening to good afternoon to all. It gives me immense pleasure to propose vote of thanks on this occasion at the outset. It is my privilege to thank our Honorable Vice Chancellor, Professor Dr. T. H. Chowski, who has given a thought provoking presidential address. This event is a prime child, our Honorable Vice Chancellor, Professor Dr. T. H. Chowski who has given continuous guidance and uh, support to organize these events at the international level and our university is globally by this effort. Because of uh, our, our Vice Chancellor, university attended 2F12B status, including in the black grant. List and also the university is receiving more grant funds from UGC Tamil Nadu government. I thank Professor Dr. Sheila Stephen, Honorable Vice Chancellor, Tamil Nadu Physical Education Sports University, Chennai, for our invitation in Madam's busy schedule and a given wonderful validity address within with your sports university. Our Tamil Nadu Dr. Ambedkar University wants to conduct sports workshop, seminar, conference in sports and law. Thank you, Madam. I thank guest of honor, Dr. B.G. Jain, National Sports Secretary, Physical Education Foundation of India, FIFI, New Delhi, for accepting our invitation and joining the inaugural session. The main success of even depends upon the participation by thoughtful thank to registered participation to make this even a grand success. I thank Dr. Raja Lashimi, Assistant Professor, HOD Criminology Department, School of Excellence at Tamil Nadu, Dr. Amit Kaya, who has given the welcome address. Thank you, Madam. I thank Professor Dr. 
B. Balaji, Director in Charge for School of Excellence Law, Tamil Nadu Dr. Ambedkar University, has given the inaugural address. Thank you, sir. The successful complete of the conference of conference A is only because of the contribution from our resource person within the busy schedule. They have agreed and given valuable lecture on behalf of our Honorable Vice Chancellor, Tamil Nadu Dr. Ambedkar University, in my immense pleasure to thank our resource person. I thank Dr. Shanti Rajeshagran, MD, USCA, for delivering the excellent lecture on preventation is cure for health living, physical, mental health. This lecture is more important during this COVID-19 and also for our lifelong time. I also thank Hela Davido, Physical Education, Department of Physical Education, and a research scholar, Sports University is Germany, who has the present valuable topic on sports education during COVID-19 and a challenge for the future. The presentation was a invite. I also thank Mr. Rosalind Hamero, World Athlete Lecturer, Head Coach for Eastern University Philippines, for providing valuable information on the physical fitness, strength, and the college university students during COVID 19. Very useful day, sports person. Thank you, madam. I like to thank Dr. Viramani Chalaparam, Senior Lecturer, Physical Education Sports. Institute of Technology Education, Singapore, for his enlightened speech on this important fitness, a need of coordination in movement patterns. His valuable current situation. Thank you, sir. I like to thank Tirsa Sishu, lecturer come journalist, speaker, education, Lotus TV, Hong Kong, has given an impressive speech on the nutrition and the health, mental health, well-being, immunity, participation of the whole element by our innovative thought of working lecture. Thank you, madam. I like to thank our loved Dr. L.A. Raja, assistant professor, Amnadi Dr. Ambit Kalayanu Chichanai, who has Valuable lecture on sports ethics and law. For this time, the first time of Tamil Nadu. I like to thank Dr. S. Asok Kumar, Tamil Nadu Dr. University, Jess Singh, Assistant Librarian, Joy Darwin, Technical Assistant, Tamil Nadu Dr. University, who has given a massive technical support to conduct these events in our webex. I like to thank our loved students, Castro, Abhishek Castro, for wonderful comparing, which is started from 9:30 a 9:30 a.m. to 2:30 till time. I like my brother, the author Asan, Assistant Professor, Tamil Nadu Dr. Ambedkar University. Then I, for his valid contribution is organizing one of the support my event successfully. Thank you, sir. I have to thank our teaching faculty, non-teaching staff, and the students for the uncommitable cooperation while organizing this international virtual conference. Once again, I thank all my colleagues who support me and indirectly for the success of the international conference. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you soon. Hello. Respected, sir. Yes. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. The participants, the feedback form has been posted in the YouTube comment box and been in the 
the Cisco WebEx chat box, you can fill the feedback form and then the certificate will be sent to you via mail. So I thank, as a moderator, I thank our honorable to Vice Chancellor Sir, Professor Dr. T. S. Sastri Sir, I thank, I thank the Paramasivam Sir, Raja Hassan Sir, and the entire teaching fraternity of Tamil Nadu Dr. Ambedkar Law University. Wonderful opportunity to compare this international virtual seminar on sports life, health, ethics, and law. And I must be thankful to all the participants for your cooperation sure. in making this event a grand sure. success. I thank everyone for your wonderful cooperation, all the resource persons for your valuable lectures and sessions. I thank everyone. And as a moderator, I had a great exposure in connecting with you all and to moderate this wonderful international event, which has been holded and organized by the Tamil Nadu Dr. Ambedkar. So, I thank everyone. Thank you so much. And uh, Ended. After everyone fills the feedback form, the meeting will be ended. So I highly request all the participants to fill the feedback. Thank you so much. Means a lot. Hello. Sir. For a wonderful session for today. The session is very useful. Huh? Huh? to all of you this session was too much it was too much information to all of we people sir. thank you sir i have madam can you give me the details of details to join the diploma in sports law Okay, ma'am, can you share the details to join the diploma in sports law? Sir, in future you will get it, sir. Now the plannings are going on. So kindly wait. Yeah. Yeah, wait. thank you very much, sir. Thank you very much for giving your answer. Hello. Yeah, tell me, sir. Participants, we are very happy. Participants, we are very happy to know your enthusiasm in to know about the LLM courses on sports law and the diploma courses on the sports law. Now the now the planning is going on. Shortly it will be announced. Ambedkar uh, University, Dr. Mr. Paramasuram sir, Dr. Honorable Vichan sir, and then Raja Azam sir. The entire team is there working 